a world where nostalgia rages across the land, where everyone and their mother has a podcast, where there's still a movie trailer guy who says, in a world. Three friends revisit films, shows, and games that molded them as they search for answers to life, the universe, and everything in between. Settle in and join us for Screen Refresh. Welcome back to Screen Refresh, a show where we revisit the films, shows, and games of our childhood to take another look at what we fell in love with the first time. As always, I'm Dean, and I'm joined by the rest of the Screen Refresh crew, Nick and Tim. Hello there. Hi. The month of June 1993 contained some of the most prolific events that changed pop culture forever. Prince celebrated his birthday by changing his name to an unpronounceable symbol. Lorraine Bobbitt amputated her husband John's <laughs> penis. And one of the most influential dinosaur films of our time roared its way into our hearts. I'm, of course, talking about the direct video smash hit, citation needed, Prehysteria. Hey. Not the little known it, Jurassic Park. <laughs> it, it grossed over $100 million in rental sales, citation needed. <laughs> Yeah, I looked at... Is that from Wikipedia? You saw that fact? It's, no, it's from... Uh, what is it? Uh, from dinopedia.fandom.com. <laughs> Sounds legit. Which I think is... Um, they use information from another source that I didn't vet. Well, I guess it's more akin to our IMDb trivia track rate right, then. In, in nowadays dollars, that would be like $205 million in rental sales. You know, half of what Jurassic Park made in the entire year of 1993. Jurassic Park, I think, made 500 on its first weekend. 500 I, on its first weekend? Yeah, it was a... That's maybe, that's, maybe, maybe that's inflation like, adjusted, but... I actually watched more than three times in theaters. I've seen a few movies twice, but the amount of movies I've seen more than that in theaters, I think Jurassic Park is the only... I think I saw it six times in theaters. Oddly enough, Damn. the movie I saw most in theaters was There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Men. <laughs> Only because I had a friend who worked cinematic. at that theater and they were going out of business. So they just let any of us in from free throughout high school. And it happened to be that like one month span where those movies were like in theaters. So it was like, what else are we going to do? Let's go see a movie. What's playing? There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Men. They're just single-handedly relying on Tim's wallet to stay in business. I got in for free for those. They eventually put you in the credits on the uh, home release. <laughs> um, hey, I, going to the you. Going to the movies was a luxury for me as a kid. I mean, as I got to be a teenager and could, like, bum 20 bucks and get my friends to take me, uh, I went more often. But having my parents take me to the movies was, like, an event. So getting to see it at least once, yeah. Jurassic Park was great. That would I never saw it in the theater. After yeah, that. we we weren't movie theater people as children, just because like we never really did outings that much. So I think maybe over my childhood we saw like ten movies as a family in theaters. And alas, Jurassic Park was not one of them. You saw it eventually. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw it on VHS release. I mean, when they did the, what was it, like the 15th anniversary? Oh, the 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 re-release, that was, um, I think, what, like early 2010s? Because we mm -hmm. went with um, a buddy of mine. So for all of our listeners, Nick and I went with a buddy of mine that we didn't realize until halfway through Jurassic Park that we were seeing this re-release as fans, and he was seeing this for the very first time. <laughs> Because when the T-Rex would pop up or the raptors would pop up, it was like sheer amazement of like, whoa, oh. And it's like, is is this the first time you're seeing this? He's like, yes. And I'm like, I am jealous. Yeah. Which uh, re-release are you talking about? Because it, it came out in 3D in like 2013 or something like that. I think that, that might have been it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, def I saw it then in 3D during its re-release. But I hadn't seen it in the theater since, yeah, June... 15th which was my birthday in 1993 what's your birthday now uh june 23rd 1967 um you had one of those moving birthdays my yeah parents had that for me too i was born on a leap year and every hundredth leap year your birthday <laughs> it's something with the cosmos and 
Oh, like Astral. Mercury and retrograde and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, some and... of that bullshit. And then you're... Yeah. I don't know how I know what my birthday is. It's just like I, I wake up and I just know it's my birthday. I was just told I didn't deserve one yet. <laughs> Ouch. You've been bad. You do not get a birthday this year. <laughs> well, guess I'll stay 10. If only it worked that way. Hey, it was gay. I got to eat free and get into theaters at a discounted price until I was 30. Um... So prehysteria. Oh, oh yeah. So that uh, I have to apologize. I didn't remember there was a direct to video release uh, until after I'd watched the movie. Yeah, it took me um, a while to um, search for when did it release in theaters and what did it release against to finally realize that it's a direct to video movie, so it didn't release against anything in theaters. It released far enough away from Jurassic Park, about three weeks away. <laughs> <laughs> I can find some audience at home. I mean, it's like Wing um, Commander coming out, what, like the week before Matrix? <laughs> and two weeks before, like, Phantom Menace? Um, I I guess this is, I'd probably, yeah, I'd seen Jurassic Park three weeks later or the next month you know, or so. I'm going to Blockbuster. I'm like, oh, there's a dinosaur movie. It's new. It's on, like, the new release shelf. And that's probably, I assume that's when I watch it. I don't really know. I just remember seeing this as a kid. It might have been TV, TV. But, or it might have been a video yeah. rental. I don't really know. I never saw it in stores. I only just we had some movie channel, HBO, Cinemax. I don't, I don't know. It was on one of those. Yeah, and that's where I remember watching this and um, the sequel quite a bit. The for the second one is the only one I remember explicitly watching. They did make a third one, but that was I was way too old for it, or I just I never even saw it play on TV by that point in time. You were probably rightly so, even too sophisticated for the third movie by the time it I was came out. Probably too sophisticated for the first one, but I mean, I still, <laughs> I, I even as a kid, I remember like I didn't like this that much, but it wasn't bad enough to not watch it. I, I but don't. It was remember. a dinosaur. I just. It was a dinosaur dinosaurs. movie. Yeah. For as a kid, like I'll I'll take it because there really wasn't that many others except what Land Before Time and um, We're Back didn't come out yet. So, that Whoopi Goldberg dinosaur partner movie, whatever that was. No, oh god, what was the name of that movie? Something Rex. Oh, Theodore Rex. That's Theodore it. Rex. Yeah, Tammy I mean, still the, have never seen that. Tammy, Tammy and the T Rex, which I I I feel like I would enjoy for its presentation, but I still have not oh, seen. You've that. never seen it? No, I really want to watch bad. it. It's on it's, Shutter. It's amusing. Yeah, <laughs> that's Denise Richards, right? Mm-hmm. Denise Richards, Paul, Paul, Paul Walker. Walker, Paul Walker, um, mm-hmm. and I forgot. Oh God, what's his name? Who plays Bernie in Weekend at Bernie's? Yeah, um, I don't know the, the actor's name, but the main villain. Um, yeah, I've never seen this film until today. Prehysteria, at least. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I had never heard of it until we were talking about movies that everybody forgot about, and then you guys had brought this up like a couple months back. Um. So it was the first time viewing. How did you feel about it? It's Puppet Master for kids, which makes sense because it's Full Moon. Well, it's Moonbeam Entertainment, which is a subset of Full Moon Productions or Full Moon Films or whatever. Um, Charles Band's company. So this was um, Charles and Albert Band. Albert Band was his father. Right. But they were like directors, writers, mainly producers. And Full Moon did a lot of... Um, schlock. Like I don't want to say. Oh well, yeah, I, I didn't want to say like schlock. It or, looked like, like schlock. Like, I, I just looked at the IMDb credits. I'm like, this seems. Uh, like it schlock. was a lot of yeah. It was a lot of like lovingly crafted '80s horror things that okay. I appreciate. Um, and then over the years, they kind of really leaned into the the more like the very tongue in cheek stuff. So they started. They were the company that ended up doing like. Evil Bong, the Ginger Dead Man, like in the 2000s and onward kind of deal. Yeah, they did those. that? Yeah. But I constantly on, saw the uh, the covers for it at Blockbuster, especially like the Gingerbread Man. Cause, the evil yeah, because early on, they did a lot of stuff like Puppet Master, Castle Freak, Subspecies. So it's like, it's not the, the cream of the crop horror, but it's like, it's a lot of fun stuff. Um, it's enjoyable from there. But they all have that very same style and feel. So when I saw this, it's like, oh, yeah, like it definitely makes sense that this is the same like production line 
um, that did all the other ones from there. Same kind of similar music, similar um, style, similar acting, but yeah, it's it's fun. Have you seen Dra- um, Dracula's Dog? Uh, no, I think that was what, like 77? <laughs> oh, was that when? The, oh, yeah, because that was his dad. Yeah. I think made that one. And Ghoulies too. I never saw any of the Ghoulies movies. Neither have I. Uh, have you, you've never seen Ghoulies go to college? <laughs> is that one of the sequels? That is one of the sequels. <laughs> it's got to be entertaining on some level, right? I mean, um, I've actually personally have only ever seen Ghoulies 1. Ghoulies do they Do they primarily come out of the toilet or is that just the cover? And they come out once in the toilet. So <laughs> they primarily from, emerge from toilets. <laughs> what I remember as a kid seeing Ghoulies one, I don't even remember the Ghoulies themselves being in it a ton. Took a real Jaws approach, like unless it's a like that Rocky Horror the Warriors mashup that happened to me as a child. Like I remember seeing Ghoulies, but I always remember it being more about this like warlock and this other stuff going on. And to this day, I never know if I just turned it on and TV guide channel was wrong and it wasn't ghoulies. And I've always thought it was, but I've never cared enough to go back and like, let me dig that back up and see what a wild thing that would have been to have you remember like the TV guide screwed up. You're like, (laughs) I just watched Terminator, but there's like a ghost in it. (laughs) It'd be funny if it was something more like, you know, do you guys want to see Lassie kids? Yeah. And then you put that on and instead it's this. <laughs> <laughs> or like it's the 1980s blob. Sleepaway camp huh. too. <laughs> so it didn't seem like the directors like had a huge like, oh, those guys did this. Except for Puppet Master. That's the only one that I was like, oh, okay. That was kind of a well-known, respected. Yeah, like I mean, if you're into some thing. of the... Yeah, like more of the B-Horror and whatnot, then I think some of them might be more recognizable. And then if you're into more of the, I don't know, like jokey, kind of purposefully dumb cannabis-related stuff that they do nowadays, then I'm sure you recognize a lot more of them, but not my bag, baby. Uh, The film stars Brett Cullen. I guess I would say most notably Brett Cullen. Um, he's the only one out of this lot that I could decipher that had a lasting career. Most recently, he was Thomas Wayne in the uh, Joker. Not most recently, but that I've seen. He was Thomas Wayne in the Todd Phillips Joker movie. What? I'll look. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, the Batman? Wait, what? He played... Did I say... Yeah, he was in... Yeah, I said Joker. Thomas Wayne, right? Yeah. 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 What, that what? was him? Yes, sorry. Oh, I you, think guys, you, startled, you guys were like incredulous. You startled Dean with you your... Yeah, I was like, oh no, I said something wrong. <laughs> no, just... I This this is the kid that was in um, Last Action Hero, right? Oh, no, 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 yes. no. That, that's right. That's no, 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 no. That's Austin O'Brien. Um, Brett, um, what's his oh, name? Oh, sorry. Brett Collins is the, the dad. He's the father, Frank. He's the father. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's why I said most I mean, notably the, Brett Cullen. Oh, that's funny. He was in The Dark Knight Rises as well. Yeah. I always remember it was Eddie Martell in The Replacements, the the jerk quarterback that Keanu Reeves replaced that later comes back. Oh, really? Them after I'd seen that movie, yep. but I didn't. I, I saw that on his credits, but I couldn't tell you. I wouldn't remember. Some Someday I may choose The Replacements. He was a congressman in The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, I thought it was a congressman. Like Alfred Albert. No, it's just listed <laughs> as congressman. <laughs> Anthony Congressman. A dot Congressman. <laughs> um, he was on Lost too. He had like a he had like a couple episodes in the second season. Then he gets killed by Michelle Rodriguez. Um, <laughs> Colleen Morris plays his love interest, Vicky, who I have kind of a crush on watching this movie, but maybe I had a crush the first time. I don't know. <laughs> Um, Austin I only know her from Valley of the Dolls, the TV series. I've never seen her. Okay, so that was that. So she wasn't something else you've seen. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't. I just know of the series in the '90s. I, I didn't like watch it as a kid. I just am aware of it. Gotcha. Just because I know the original book and movie Valley of the Dolls. 
Also, interestingly enough, on IMDb, they list the starting year, but they don't list an ending year on Valley of the Dolls. <laughs> so, as far as that implies, it's still going, still going. I think they're waiting for like, a, yeah, like Ghostbusters style sequel to yeah, pick back they're up. Like, uh, just waiting for that fire to start smoldering. It's like we just never going to drop the next episode of <laughs> Valley of the Dolls. Oh, a thirty-year break kept you waiting, huh? The story I want to tell needs time. I refuse to use old people makeup on my girls. We're going to have Richard Link later this. <laughs> uh, Austin O'Brien plays, uh, I guess, kind of the main character, Jerry, uh, the little kid on the cover. He's on the cover, so he's got to be the main character, right? I'd say that's so. That's how it works. Yeah. I mean, that's who they're marketing. It's like every boy that age wants a pet dinosaur, and that's... Uh... So as far as Jerry... Um... Like, if I had a nickel every time this kid throughout the movie refers to somebody being in heat, I wouldn't be rich, but I'd have a lot more nickels than I'd expect. You could buy a lollipop at a 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might be able to get, like, a quarter soda from a vending machine around the year that this came out. Yeah, there's a couple lines in here that are... Again, it's There's like... a lot of things in this movie that I were a little taken aback by. Just some abrasive themes, I guess. Uh, yeah. Well, this was a kid's movie, and at least, like, Who Framed Roger Rabbit isn't a kid's movie, and parents unknowingly made their kids watch it thinking it was. <laughs> this is a kid's movie, and it has some themes in it that would make Roger Rabbit look bad. Or like, like 80% look, of uh, what good thing. Rico Sarno says, for the most part. Just all Rico those things he just, like, Sarno. continuously just is talking the entire time Rico like, oh, you, what you like to threaten women he's like maybe a little <laughs> <laughs> Rico Sarno played by Stephen Lee who I don't know if he I don't think in my research he had I mean he, he's been in a ton of stuff but nothing that like jumps out as me yeah. it's like oh I definitely know him um it's one of these like oh those guys that you see in a bunch of things but I never remember directly I think if for what Go ahead. I was going to say, for a while, his voice sounded familiar that I almost thought, like, he had to have voiced something I watched as a kid. But I thought at first he was like Harvey Bullock on the Batman animated series. And then I was digging through and I'm like, nah, it's not him. He just has a recognizable voice, I guess. He had a demeanor that I thought I expected to be like, oh, he's probably in stuff because I'm not saying he's groundbreaking. But I'm like, he's kind of an entertaining, sniveling bastard. Um, yeah. I was I was gonna say I think if Wayne Knight had turned down the uh, Dennis Nedry, I'm like I could see him being a Dennis Nedry. He's kind of a Dennis Nedry type. Yeah, I, guess. Or I could actually see him taking over for what's his name, who played the father in Small Soldiers. Yeah, Phil. Phil yeah. Hartman. No, 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 no the no. other father. Oh yeah, Jerry. yeah, the main father. He's a little more slimy, but I yeah, I, I, I see well, what yeah. you mean. He's slimy. Um. And then there's other people. Oh, Samantha Mills plays Monica, the daughter, uh, Jerry's sister. And those are pretty much the main people. There's a few other characters, but we don't need to break them down. I don't I mean, think there's there's one other actor you're forgetting, Dean. Am I? Wait, wait. No, I was going to hold on. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's like the patron saint of yeah. I was screen go- what I was going to say was Nick. <laughs> I was going to phrase it, Nick. Hmm. I'll give you one guess. If you didn't look it up, or if you didn't look at the credits, as to who does the dinosaur noises in this movie. Oh, dude, I already knew. That's part of my notes. <laughs> really? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, like the first time you hear the Madonna <laughs> screeching, and I'm like, that's fucking Frank Welker, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who that's hasn't tell. paid this man? <laughs> that's definitely his tell. So I'm like, why does why does it sound like Abu from Aladdin right now? And then I look it up. I'm like, yep, sure enough. <laughs> Frank Welker returns as all the dinosaurs. I'm never disappointed about seeing Frank Welker on that cast list. I think he just went into a booth for an hour and he just just like do some noises and then he, <laughs> they cut it all up where they need it. Do some yells, well, some f- chirps, some. What I found kind of interesting and a little odd is um, Whitey, the janitor, Tom Williams, 
I was like, oh, like he sounds familiar. Like what else has he done? And then I check his IMDb and it's like all of these things that just says like baby VO for a bunch of shows. And I was like, oh, was that like a character that just like popped up in the 90s as like a cameo on stuff? And then I realized, no, he just did baby voices <laughs> in every show and movie from like 1987 to like 2003. Like Goo 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 Goo's and Gaga's kind of thing? I guess. So when you see t- <laughs> when you see Whitey the janitor in this movie, evidently he just cornered the market on baby voiceovers. Good for him. He was fun in this movie. He was scary. I mean, fun. <laughs> it's scary me, how funny he was. He gave me a lot of like old Greg vibes. <laughs> And then I realized he's not that kind of character. I'm like, oh, he's not bad. I, har- I judged him harshly. But it was still in the back of my mind. He's a, a good heart. Got a lot of nice things it, in here. It just <laughs> amused me when, like, he gets attacked by Rico. And then, like, uh, what was it? Like, he hits him or something. Um, yeah, he hits him in the belly. When Rico was accusing him of, like, yeah, like, stealing the stuff. Right. And then he's like, why do you? And he's like, I know, I know. I'm fired. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> There is one scene towards the end of the movie, and a couple characters do this throughout, that, like, they the camera focuses just on them in a close-up of, like, suppose, like, clearly them looking at the dinosaurs or something. But instead of making it look like their eyes are slightly off, so they're looking at the dinosaurs in the foreground, their eyes are up a little and locked directly on the lens. So it looks like they're looking at me. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Some existential themes going on. I did. Realize. I mean, I knew I would watch Prehysteria tonight. I didn't know that Prehysteria would watch me tonight. <laughs> did you know Frank Walker also reprised the role of dinosaurs in the sequel? No, but I'm not surprised. He is not listed in the third one, but I'm still not convinced the third one exists. They probably just recycle recycle things <laughs> yeah, I was from gonna the say. first two. They probably just reused the voices because I don't know the dinosaur voices well enough to be like, wait a second. He did that same chirp noise in the first movie. It's interesting looking back, like, the scope of this movie is just, it's small. I know it's a, a low budget, it's direct video. Is that a pun? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The camera had to be small too to film these tiny dinosaurs. Um, It's just, I mean... The dinosaurs hatch, then they run around the farm a little bit, and that's then they go to town, and that's that's the end yeah. of the movie. Like Rico has them, Rico loses them, Rico wants them back, Rico tries, they take him back from Rico, the movie ends. They should have split this up into a end game situation where Rico On your left wins <laughs> wins and the dusts end. them. <laughs> I'll These do dinosaurs it by are self. mine. <laughs> Just like, because he framed it around Rico, I was like, yeah, it should be his movie. Like, uh, <laughs> how he perceives it. I mean, it kind of was. Isn't, like, the main character is supposed to have the most screen time? I think he kind of did. He does get a lot of it. He does. Yeah. Or at least, if if not, it has to be, like, 50-50. I think it's because I include the kids and the father all as one yeah, they're all pretty much on <laughs> screen at the same time for most yeah, of it. Yeah, like they don't really have a lot of separate stuff. So it's just like, oh, it's either Rico getting his own scenes or the family. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about Brett Collins' father uh, duties in this movie. Like, goes back and forth for me on like being a good dad and being like a little strange. A little pervert, a little, little pervert, a little perverted. Nice underwear, like, dude. No, no one, no one does that. I like your raisin underwear. Oh, you like the raisins? Was Sun made like a sponsor for this film? Like, I know they talked about him being like a raisin farmer or something, but like they have the Sun made in the house. They have a Sun made bumper sticker. People are walking around in Sun made shirts. Damn, I didn't notice it- the Sun made. Uh, the, the thing movie. that got me the most through the whole movie is just being a dog owner. Raisins are toxic to dogs. And with how many raisins were just strewn about everywhere at all times. <laughs> I didn't know that. And with the golden retriever being so close to the food, my dog would have eaten every single raisin in that room when they're hatching. And the self-control that dog must have had to not eat any of those raisins. I'm proud of it. 
they also they love the dog they hate the dog like each family member seems to care for the dog then there's moments where they're like get that dog out of here <laughs> shut that dog up i love out. how yeah. movies like this the dog is strangely sentient it's able to do things and know things that no other dog would ever possibly do i know there's <laughs> eggs in this cooler i need to make a nest instinctively because me a mammal is going to make a nest <laughs> put down that gun <laughs> no but <laughs> i like like at some point in the move towards the end of the movie i think it's vicky when they threaten to like take care of the dog and i think she's the one who says like don't hurt it it's the closest thing they have to a mother <laughs> that's rough <laughs> <laughs> Just a slow zoom on Elvis's face. Elvis the Tyrannosaurus. Just a tear comes down. Um, speaking of Elvis, uh, Jerry has an... Obs- is that Was that normal for kids in the 80s? Well, sorry. I guess this would have been early 90s. Kids in 1993. <laughs> to have Elvis obsessions? Like, that's your musical hero? I mean, I mean I... Lilo and Stitch. That that was hers. That Oh, that was the girl, the protagonist. I never saw Lilo and Stitch. Was that that was yeah. her like hero? Was Neither Elvis? Die. No, we're shutting this down. We're shutting this down. <laughs> Shut it down. Next week on Screen Refresh, Dean watches Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and, and uh, Stitch. Citation. Cue the uh, always sunny music. But yes, <laughs> she is. She is a massive fan of uh, Elvis. Okay. Which I think is usually what character loves Elvis in 1993 in a kids movie. No, I think it's what writer loves Elvis enough to make a kid love Elvis in 1993 <laughs> in a kid's movie. Yeah. I mean, oh, I grew yeah. up liking Elvis, but I mean, I wouldn't walk around the house like just like playing Elvis, playing my guitar. With your hair people, slicked like, back. Hey, mama kind of deal. Uh-huh. Yeah. Swinging your hips. <laughs> like a little Johnny Bravo. <laughs> hey, mama. <laughs> oh, mama. Oh, um, mama. Yeah, just an interesting trait for Jerry. I mean, it only, well, I like how it just, they talk about... I, uh, he, he just, I guess it really just serves to be like, he has a few lines and then he names, gives the naming convention to the dinosaurs. They are named after musical artists, I guess. I don't know. It's just like, let's give him a quirk. And it's, you're right. It's probably the writers. Like I grew up loving Elvis because it was more appropriate for the time. Because he was super. Popular. I mean, it's not like inappropriate for him to like Elvis. <laughs> I think they needed to have the kid listen to something edgy, and I don't think Metallica would have been an appropriate choice for a kid movie. I mean, my dinosaur. He could have. He could have been big into like Head Like a Hole by Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> yeah, right. This is Trent, it's crazy to think they're that old. Oh my god, I always think that they're so much younger than that. But like, no, they're older than. A lot of other bands. Stegosaurus is Marilyn Manson. Um, oh my god, Head Like a Hole was 1989. Yeah, right? That means Head Like a Hole can appear in a Stranger Things episode next season. It could be. <laughs> oh, did that take place in 88? No, I think they're doing a time jump next season. Gotcha. Yeah. They're like, we can't fight the puberty in these kids anymore. <laughs> no, you can't. They're supposed to be like 14. I mean, they've already gone through it. And like, I've been rewatching the whole series, and... They look so young in the first season, and then they kind of age a little bit by the second season. Then the third season, they age a little bit more, and then it fe- seems like seven years went by, but in reality, it was only a couple months. Yeah. Plus, there it's, it's like, Will's like, Mom, eighth grade is tough. <laughs> <laughs> Will is a grown-ass man. He, what's yeah. funny is he is, I remember looking this up, all the ages recently, because I was curious. Will is like the youngest, but he's turned into a man. Like before everybody else. Yeah, they're supposed to be what freshmen in high school. It's Vec that he walks over and just slugs them. <laughs> oh shit, he's a grown ass man. You're being tried as an adult, sir. Um, Will's got a gun. He's old enough to buy one. <laughs> so yes, the Elvis thing is a little peculiar. I saw some trivia. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if it's accurate. Wait, was it on IMDb get- or not? It was, which is why I take it with a grain of salt. (laughs) No, Um, citation needed. Yeah, citation needed. (laughs) They said that evidently uh, they tried to get Elvis tracks for this film, but they were too expensive. Oh, yeah. So they had to go without, despite the fact that they had written the Elvis thing into this. So there's a lot of like Elvis adjacent throughout this movie in terms of music. It's just like rockabilly stuff that's like, yeah, sounds like. Which, I mean, it's not like, it's not 
bad. I think it's it's perfectly fine. And if the kid is super big into Elvis, like it's very possible he could just be into rockabilly in general. So right. he's got Stray Cats albums and yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I'll buy it. The so I mean this movie opens just with hieroglyphs. I, is that Venezuela? They're in South America somewhere, right? That's what they said. <laughs> yeah, at any moment, I was expecting Alfred Molina to help. <laughs> uh, Rico through the caverns and stuff. <laughs> it's kind of like a yeah. It could have been the Alfred Molina surrogate, except he's more trying to prevent than murder and double cross. Um, when so yeah, what's his name? Um, uh, what is his name? That is Rico. Rico Rico Sarno. Rico Suave. It's like the annoying American being led. He's got a cooler with him, which makes me wonder: Did he know about these dinosaur eggs that? he's going to find i think i don't think so i i mean i of all things a cooler wouldn't have been it i think that just was probably where his i don't what do people drink in 93 like shasta or i don't know fruitopia yeah yeah i i think that's all he i think that's all he had in there i see you know so it's like practical and he's like oh shit i can use this it was just like good fortune i see I like that he calls his guy Jeffy when it's just and it's supposed to be Jefe because <laughs> he's in Spanish, a Spanish name, Jeffy. <laughs> well, he- Jefe is is Spanish for boss. El Jefe. Oh, so maybe he doesn't want to call him boss. I don't know. Is that what? See, I never l- looked into the Spanish in Jurassic Park when they're at the Amber Mine, and the guy rushes onto the screen. He's like Jefe. Is yeah, that so boss, he means boss? boss. We oh. found another mosquito. Oh, really? Did you? All right. Well, come on. You got to show me. <laughs> oh, it all makes sense now. I thought his name was just. Yeah, we thought it was just going to be pre hysteria this episode. <laughs> you guys are also getting a Jurassic Park back. We're going pilot. You were going. And then, to- <laughs> and then I told you this, and then you didn't know, but in case others don't, when Gennaro is on that stupid little like raft thing and they're pulling him in, yeah. He's mud- the, um, what's his name? He looks down and he mutters something in Spanish, and he says to the other guy, "I bet you a thousand. I bet you a thousand dollars that he'll slip and fall." And then seconds later, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, you hear we're... a guy kind of yelling in the background, but you don't hear uh, specifically <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I thought he was just muttering something like prolific to himself, but no, he's like saying he's gonna fall down. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so he had to leave with this. He had to leave early. His daughter's getting a divorce. They want Alan Grant. Um, <laughs> You'll never get him out of Montana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We can He's literally hijack this. <laughs> we will hijack He's got a gun. this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's an expedition going through. I don't know if they say the country in South America where they are, but. Nondescript um, South America. The kind that has dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, right. An ancient civilization apparently had dinosaur eggs, and they don't want you to take them. Um, yeah, I was going to say, so Hefe brought him all the way there for the most part, and then is like, don't take these eggs. <laughs> We're tasked with protecting them for generations. Then well, maybe don't bring them as a guide through the jungle. Yeah, I think Hefe didn't realize that there was ulterior motives on this tour, and he pulls a, what he pulls a, a gun on him. It's like, the tour is over. <laughs> It tries to force him to turn around because apparently if you're not an ancestor of these this tribe, you will get killed if you go near this temple. Which Rico letter proves false entirely. Right. Throwing all of their religion into question. <laughs> um, we cut back. This, this whole kind of opening is cut back and forth between showing Rico on the jungle expedition and then meeting this almost nuclear family... Uh, on the farm, who is going to run afoul of Rico? Oh, wait, yeah. is that the, how you I mean, say that? Run afoul? Very, very typical father, son, daughter, dog mom. <laughs> Dad, why do you hate mom? Dad, why do you hate <laughs> our dog? Well, I like how they're. So the father has the fossils and he calls Jerry in and they're like, oh, they're cleaning up the fossils. And then as they're just sitting there having a father-son moment, he just looks at him and he's like, do you miss mom? <laughs> okay. And he's like, who do you think misses her more? <laughs> okay. Didn't know this was a contest, but 
awkward kid. <laughs> He's like carving with a knife in the table, just <laughs> severed head. <laughs> Who do you think misses her more on a scale of one to ten? On three. One, two, three, go. <laughs> also, I like how they say they had to get rid of Ruby's puppies. And when Jerry complains, Frank lets him know, like, there's no way we can have five more mouths to feed. Yeah. The exact number of dinosaurs Ex- we'll get later. Yes. As Some he looks really dead in the camera. Foreshadowing. <laughs> holds the lens with one hand and says it directly into the onboard microphone. At the same time, Monica, the uh, Frank's daughter, Jerry's sister, she's trying to, pleading to go out with her boyfriend, um, and he dad shuts her down, but she sneaks out and goes out anyway. Uh, the end. Back in the jungle, scene six, scene. jungle three, jungle. Uh, Rico Sarno. <laughs> Too jungle, too furious. He somehow, I guess, you know, he just came back late at night after <laughs> after he was taken almost to the temple. He finds his way back on his own without the Hefe and Jeffy. Um, <laughs> kind of slips inside to this temple where he sees some human remains. <laughs> that looks fresh as fuck. Way too chill for how he's like seeing these dead bodies. <laughs> Like the eyes are still following him as he walks away, kind of deal. <laughs> I'm surprised that he was so nonchalant about it too. I mean, the body didn't look like it was some decaying skeleton that someone, you know, they they triggered the trap and they died because of it. I mean, it looked like six hours ago, Steve <laughs> and his party decided to go and get the eggs instead. This and guy, he literally, just, Steve. Oh, huh. He's got like yeah. a lumberjack flannel on, just like some other white guy, like impaled on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you think it's like a man, contractor went wrong. <laughs> it's like if they really cared that much, they would have made a larger temple and would have had more than one booby trap. I don't know how those other people died. Maybe they triggered all the booby traps and Rico just got lucky because he just waltzes in there right to the end. Well, it's because FA has to go in and reset it every day. <laughs> so if two white guys go in in the same twenty four hour period, <laughs> second one gets through. That's true. <laughs> that's why Hefe pulls the knife on him again um <laughs> yeah so he I mean Rico finds I don't know what's keeping these eggs cold but all of a sudden he's in a uh, a room temperature or whatever jungle cavern and then he just takes a few steps and it, there's ice everywhere so there's some kind of source of ice keeping these this like uh, eggs altar there's like kind of this altar with dinosaur eggs and they're frozen just chill in there i don't know what apparently happy says they mean eternal life or they're the symbol of eternal life but i don't know i think they were just like pet dinosaurs this civilization had that they thought were cool the funny to thing them. i wasn't sure when to mention this because uh it can be brought up at any point but the thing that kind of weirded me out was one they picked pretty popular dinosaurs at the time, but the one that was a curveball for me was the fact that they picked a Chasmosaurus instead of a Triceratops. Right. I mean, I'm like, that's cool, artistic choice. I have, I wouldn't see a Chasmosaurus again until Jurassic World because they were just trying to push different dinosaurs into uh, the forefront. But the other thing, and one of Jurassic Park's biggest critiques, is that a lot of these dinosaurs are not from the Jurassic period. And in the case of prehysteria, a lot of them didn't live in the same time period. So a T-Rex would never have seen a Brachiosaur, nor would it have ever seen a Stegosaurus either. So I thought that was a little interesting that they chose that. Also, they're much smaller than their real counterparts. (laughs) Like, are they permanently stunted? They were crossbred. They were just going to be cup dinosaurs. Yeah, that's why we have like pot belly pigs oh, keep in the house. That's that was Dean's husbandry at work. <laughs> why is it called husbandry anyway? Does anybody know what what root husband comes from? I don't know. Okay, I will There's include no, a like, bit wife more of Jurassic Park trivia, and that John Hammond exactly did that to get funding for his park. He had tiny elephants that were genetically. Uh, 
uh, modified so that he can showcase to possible investors like, hey, look what we can do. We want to breed dinosaurs. Give us money. <laughs> so he brought a little I guarantee pygmy. you the next ones will be bigger. Oh, yes. And he had a little pygmy elephant that he would bring around. Did that give Matt and Trey the idea for pig and elephant DNA just won't splice? Haven't you ever heard that song by Loverboy? Which song is that? Yeah, I thought that was that song by Loverboy. <laughs> uh, deep cut. Kind of deep. I don't know. It's popular. Um, we see Monica. So I, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I like how, so Hefe holds the, the knife or whatever it is on Rico when he finds the eggs. Right. And I like how, like, twice throughout this movie or three times throughout this movie, when somebody is holding a gun or a knife, the other person it just, like, all of a sudden whips around and just knocks them right out immediately. Because right. he just like hit. Because does he hit him with the egg? Yeah, he smashed. Yeah, and it doesn't break. <laughs> what if it just broke right there? Oh, just a dead dinosaur. <laughs> wasn't wasn't nursed properly. <laughs> Need a canine it's the most intervention. Expensive scrambled egg you've ever had in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like chicken. Yeah, uh, Rico escapes pretty easily from Hefe's clutches. And the ancestors apparently don't really care. They don't actually hold power over killing. Because uh, Rico hears them on the wind. They whisper in their language. Don't you jokers sneak up on me like that again. You hear me? You hear me? Oh, yeah. I didn't hear that. That would have scared the shit out of me. Right. <laughs> they only have power if he believes in them. <laughs> it's like Freddy Krueger. You have no power over me. I take back every ounce of power I gave to you. <laughs> Scene seven, Monica's caught. That's pretty much it. Monica, they cut back and Monica's sneaking back in after a night out with her boyfriend, Danny, who we meet oh, later no. on. And the Ruby, the dog, who eventually hatches these uh, dinosaurs, is just barking at her and alerts frank and she gets caught i don't know really what that serves as what a good mom just like oh she got caught sneaking in okay whatever (laughs) well that's a scene so the next one (laughs) (laughs) i'll be i'll be honest so this is the first time i saw i usually take very specific detailed notes for every scene and about 20 minutes into this film my notes just slowly started becoming i don't know I don't care. Like it's, I have I'm, about half a page worth of notes for this whole movie. Yeah, like it's a case of if you love prehistoric uh, hysteria, that's great. I don't dislike the movie. I, I'm not going to say like it's a, a terrible film, but also it's not the kind of film that I need to take detailed notes on. No, um, my wife hated this movie. She wa- <laughs> she always wants to watch. You know, she's like, oh, what movie are you guys doing this month? And I'm like, oh, we're doing Tremors. We're doing, you know, Legend. We're doing this. We're doing that. And then when I told her we're doing Prehysteria, she's like, oh, I've never seen it. I'll watch it with you. She checked out in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) She did not like it. I I enjoyed it from like a bad movie perspective because I did remember watching this as a kid and just getting fresh adult eyes on this movie changed it a lot for me. But yeah. um, I, mean, I don't it's, think it's going to stay in the library, so to speak, no. if you know what I mean. It, it's the kind of thing that you would have been a, a kid and just flicked on, like, I don't know, Channel 11 or something in an afternoon on a Saturday. And this would probably just be playing and you would just yeah. sit down and be like, OK, yeah, like I'll watch this. And I think that's the exact reason why I watched it all those right. times, because it was like, you know, two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. And it's like, oh, what's on TV? Oh, this movie. OK, I'll watch this while I play with toys. Yeah, because it's like, oh, it's I ran around all morning. Now I'm tired. I need my break before I run around all night. This is prime mm-hmm. dinosaur age for me still, because literally Jurassic Park came out a couple of weeks before that. Um, I was in, I guess, starting second grade. It's the summer. I forget. But like, it was prime dinosaur age, so I was happy to consume anything with a dinosaur in it. Um. <laughs> And that's all we really care about when you're that young, seeing it for the most that's part. That's why Dean ate all of those little toy egg things that have the dinosaur that grows in water as a child. <sighs> those were fucking great. <laughs> I saw some of those the other day. I almost bought it. <laughs> grows it in got water because so it's slimy, a sponge. Though. Oh. Oh, no. I'm thinking of the other ones. Like the I think I know more... what you mean. Yeah. the so- They're soft. 
Yeah. Soft. I don't know what that material. I mean, was. I feel like the yeah the the sponge ones were like instantaneous for the most part, and then the other ones it took like I forget how long, like a half hour or something. And it's like watch them grow and throw <laughs> them out. So so Rico's got the eggs, and C nine were headed to the museum. Um, it's just I guess they're gonna go sell that dinosaur shit they found. To the local museum, as they often do, we find out. Literally. For the last literally. eight months. <laughs> but selling the, dino shit to them. It, it bothered me because they kept calling it Azurelite. But right. that's that's not poop coprolite is. And the whole time I'm like, so man. who was I'm mistaken like, then? Who says they, Azurelite? They, were, they all did. They all did. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't. I didn't understand that. I'm like, damn, am I that much of a fucking dino nerd that I know what fossil poop is? Get those nerds! Nerd! Nerd! Well, I'm surprised this movie is not 100 percent accurate. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> Citation needed. Uh, so they head to museum to sell their fake science finds. Well, so I, I loved the car drive or the car ride over. When they, they say that Vicky, or uh, sorry, um, Monica is grounded and she's like, well, I'm jumping bail. I'm not going to stick around for that. And then Frank just says, Jerry, open the door. And he's like, what? And he's like, open the door. And he opens. He's like, you want to jump bail? Jump out. Jump out of this car right now. Get and then the he starts fuck out laughing. of this car, Monica. Yeah. <laughs> they laugh like, yeah, it's just a harmless <laughs> threat. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's like, jump. <laughs> <laughs> Like Homelander in season three. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you've decided. You've decided. Do it. Um, they get to the museum thing, which it seems like it's a room with some fossils in it. But Jerry complains about not having seen the pterodactyl exhibit. So I don't. Is it just like the front well, part of the museum? Well, because at one point they're the doing shop. so at yeah, because at the end of the movie they're doing the oh yeah, Rico's press, gonna present his big thing yeah, and they're out yeah, on the at steps the museum. That's right. Yeah, and then when he asks why do you like where's Rico and he says oh he's across the street getting ready. Okay, right. So he has that like antique shop across the street from the museum. Right. It was really a museum. I thought he owned some like junky kind of like pawn shop. But he also well, yeah. dealt with rare antiquities, too. Not an actual full-scale museum. Well, yeah. So he had the antique place there. But I guess he was going to open up his new exhibit at the exa- or the museum across the street. So I don't think he owned the museum across the street. He was just like, here's my new find. Or I'm going to do an exhibit. Right. Okay. Makes oh, sense. Oh, oh. Yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So they're at his dino shit pawn shop. That is not um, big enough for the raw sexual tension in that room. <laughs> dad, yeah, we just open up in the the museum, and Dad is nervously after eight months. He's still nervously talking to the, I guess, main employee clerk there, Vicky. Oh, they had been going there. Oh, I thought you meant eight months. Like, wait, the mother died eight months ago. <laughs> hey, you wow. move on. You move wait, on like... when you gotta move on. I mean, everybody. I no wonder their own why case. the daughter was pissed. <laughs> Mom's not even in the grave yet, Dad, and you're already going to bars picking up women. <laughs> Look at all these sultry antique shops. You might as well throw me out of a truck while you're at it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Frank is, han- is a handsome dude, objectively, and he's just uh, but also shy to talk to this pretty lady. Um, they yeah, almost just like full on make out heavy like, just in front of the shop. They just they, they try to almost do that. Well, yeah, they like lean in and then all of a sudden like Monica interrupts them. And then Jerry walks in. He's like, you want us to get lost, Dad? <laughs> like last time? I mean, kind of kind of inappropriate in a place like that. I mean. There's like other customers in there, too. Yeah, there's yeah. other customers. His kids. <laughs> Beat it, why don't you get lost? You know, when you just go to the store with your kids real quick and fall in love with an employee. <laughs> Excuse you know me, you're... I just need to check this out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Rico comes in, and he, of course he's got the very 
valuable, priceless cooler of his most prized possession, dinosaur egg, something no one has seen for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dotson had the foresight to give Nedry a hidden compartment Barbasol can with enough coolant inside to last for 36 hours to get those embryos off the island. I felt that cooler couldn't keep a Coke can lukewarm for more than an hour, but he managed to go from Venezuela or wherever to, what, California probably? (laughs) Rico, this is not a Yeti. Yeah, Yeah. but was there ice in the cooler? (laughs) I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, we don't see Ruby the dog empty the cooler later. Which he, he just grabs like grabs them out one by one. We don't see ice, so I don't <laughs> so know. He just has the eggs in there raw. Lukewarm. <laughs> and I'm amazed they fit. But those five yeah. eggs were pretty big, and I that cooler didn't look it's like a good it was selling big point enough. for that cooler. Yeah, really. It's like a bag Very of spacious. But he he shuffles in. He puts his priceless dinosaur eggs on the outside of his office and goes into the office <laughs> where I would have think you'd have them handcuffed to your hand at that point. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the, these are dinosaur eggs, man. <laughs> I'll just throw it's them right like here. It's not like you could just go down to the anybody local can Walmart. Pick them up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so Vicky tries to hustle up some more money for Frank's dinosaur poop and Frank's uh, Rico's like, no, they're, it's dinosaur poop. I'm not giving you more money for this shit, literally. Um, Which, fair, I suppose. <laughs> Listen, I've been buying your dinosaur shit for eight months. <laughs> Makes you wonder what kind of a dick site <laughs> the dad has. Like, is it just a literal sh- fossilized shit pile? Yeah, the dinosaur's bathroom, the common bathroom. <laughs> There's like the watering hole and then the shit hole. And like, that's where all the dinosaurs... I mean... <laughs> Whatever land he bought, he struck it big, seeing as he just has that in Raisin Farm. Yeah. No dinosaur bones, though. He's... <laughs> Does that mean there's lots of oil down there? Because isn't, isn't oil dead dinosaurs? Um, well, it's dead, dead carbon. All organic, yeah, I, mean, I guess. Yeah, right. You'd think he'd make a, a winery instead of a raisin farm, but I guess... Probably like a mineral-rich land there. Hmm. So they're ready to leave. Weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are whining to go home. Um, Frank tells Monica to get the cooler. Monica tells Jerry to get the cooler. Jerry tells I hate this. Ruby the dog to get the cooler. Because she's that smart. Um, and of course, where does she grab the dinosaur eggs? Because she's not that smart. <laughs> Unless she is, because she yes. knows that the value is higher. I mean, she if she knows later that they're eggs, she must have known at the time. Like, I'm taking this shit. Like, this is like a super intelligent dog. This is like Watchers level. We should have a movie focus on this dog. <laughs> so Rico, next we get Rico's calls some jerk. I forget. They give him the titular line. Look, I don't want to get prehysterical here, but uh, I think I'm going to change the course of natural history. The Taylors are driving home and. <laughs> That's when we get the great <laughs> appropriate kids line. Well, Monica, Monica's teasing dad or just like kind of riffing, not riffing. She's like, she doesn't like it. Getting pretty cozy with Professor Cupcakes, huh? Honey, we're just friends. Yeah, like, you know, how you tease your dad for finding love after his wife passes away. <laughs> you have to be abstinent and alone your entire life and take care of us. So she's teasing him, and Jerry's like, Leave him alone, he's horny. <laughs> the audacity. I just, I can't, I couldn't believe it. And my jaw hit the ground, because I, I think that would have been the first canonical time in my life where I would have heard those words, and it would have come from a freaking straight-to-DVD dinosaur movie meant for kids. <laughs> He just jerks journey. the wheel towards a tree and jumps out. <laughs> Open the door, Jerry. <laughs> Jump. Yeah, just saying the word horny. A kid, I don't know, he might be that age where he's kind of finding out from his friends what sex is or I mean, thinks he knows what sex same, is. But He's the same kid who throughout this entire movie 
says multiple times, like when the, the daughter comes down or whatever, um, and is like dressed up, uh, salaciously. Right. Um, and the father's like, oh, you can't wear that. And he ends up saying, she looks like Madonna in heat. He <laughs> continues to say, like, things are in heat. Oh, why is that dog making noise? Yeah, it's probably in heat. It must have been, like, his word-a-day calendar. It's just like, everything's in heat. I'm in heat. <laughs> this was no, this was during, like, the early 90s, so it would have been, like, the secret word of the day. So every single time he would have said heat in his mind, he's just hearing, like, the whole house screaming. Yeah! <laughs> Good screaming, everybody. Uh, we cut back and... You know, Rico is, Vicky's talking to Rico saying, you shouldn't be a dickhead to the Taylors. Um, they've been coming in here and selling you dinosaur shit for eight months. <laughs> <laughs> for that big new dinosaur shit exhibit you have across the street. I'm not taking street. your shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like, go get some, he's very, what's the word, Misog- he's misogynist. I mean, he, he's not directly being like, saying dickish things but he's just being like hey honey hey sweetheart go get some champagne let's crack it open he'd probably get along with jerry great (laughs) hey there little mama hey there doll face jerry comes in what's the matter with her she's in heat (laughs) (laughs) him and rico like low five (laughs) this kid's all right give me back my fucking dinosaurs (laughs) Holds a gun on him. Jerry holds a knife on him. <laughs> um, Vicky goes and gets the cooler and opens it at his at uh, Rico's request. He's making a grand speech about how it's going to change the world or whatever. She pulls out a turkey leg, at which I assume I think that's was for so disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's like Ruby Who just eats... had its way her way with that Ruby that uh, right turkey leg. Well. I like how Rico then screams, where are my eggs? But he does it with, like, the intensity of Gary Oldman and Lee on the Professional. <laughs> my eggs! Where are my eggs? Where are my eggs? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. He does go from zero to 100 pretty quick there. I mean, <laughs> Which I is too, appropriate though. for the... for the. Yeah. It is appropriate. Yeah, because, I mean, like, millions of dollars just walked out your door. it's like, okay, where was that thought process when you just sat them, you know, in the public eye and went into your office? Well, he didn't know yet that they actually could hatch. Because did he really think that they would hatch? I don't think, no, I think that he didn't know that. He just knew they were. If we really wanted to, we could find dinosaur eggs right now. It would be kind of expensive, but we can hold in our hands real dinosaur eggs but i don't yeah yeah, well i mean yeah but for him to think that those would actually have hatched i don't know i mean he thought they did to the point where he knocked out hefe and snuck home with them i mean if they're not cooler fossilized eggs they're going to be valuable i mean he even was like raving about it on the phone about like don't want to get pre-hysterical like you were saying did dinosaurs you knew they were worth some money i mean did instead dinosaurs they didn't just lay eggs on unfertilized eggs did they i don't know this for a fact well he checked by shaking each one (laughs) held it up to his ear shook it this one's hard boiled (laughs) (laughs) um in any case, don't worry, it'll be over. Easy. He's having a conniption over his eggs being gone, which is appropriate. Um, his eggs that he however, stole. However, every other action that he does, however, is not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> no, he his escalation is also a little, it's a little bit. You know, they the make HR training videos based on his actions. <laughs> I mean, it jumps from like, let me pay you to get it back to, I will murder all of you. <laughs> I love how he brings the case, all the, like the empty one back. It's like, here's your cooler. Where's mine? And then, it, you know, the family's just like, oh, hey, cool. Thanks. And they practically shut the door on him. Yeah. Which that's kind of, and then he's like, 
well, I don't have it. Now get out of here. And it's like, well, clearly you went home with a cooler. So it's somewhere on your property. Yeah. Kind of a jerk move to just be like, thanks for mine. Now get out of (laughs) here. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I looked all in this room and I couldn't find it. (laughs) Scram. We looked everywhere except our huge basement we have. Yeah, right. (laughs) Where our dog hangs out. I like how Rico's like, it's something you can't put a price tag on. Here's $200. <laughs> <laughs> he had it ready. That was to a lot of money it. back then. That was that was definitely. Uh, it's uh, $405 in today's dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. I mean, I'll, I'll give you my cooler. For I'd it. sell my cooler for that in a heartbeat. It's a $50 cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, then that starts putting on bad ideas in your head about becoming like a cooler magnate. And it's just unrealistic. <laughs> I'll be the cooler king, like Steve McQueen. That's a great escape cut. But... Oh, you're the heir to that famous cooler fortune. <laughs> yeah, Dad shuts him down pretty hardcore when... Uh... It's almost like he sees the door being shut and Riku just kind of like falls into the door frame, like as the door is being <laughs> shut. And, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, the next day we cut to breakfast and... Ruby has been hatching or nursing those eggs. I don't know if they show her doing it the night before, but by the morning, they have hatched. Everybody's having breakfast. Um, <laughs> that's when, like, Monica is like, <laughs> shut that dog up, please. Well, poor Ruby. That's also when they hear the dog making noise and they're like, what is that? And Jerry's like, she's probably in heat. <laughs> <laughs> this is now the th- third time of this film <laughs> i think it might have been second because <laughs> i know really he says it like i think he says it like three times about ruby throughout the film i lose track of when they all happen <laughs> it's more appropriate though for him to say that uh the dog is in heat versus his sister though <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know what sex is <laughs> I have dial up. <laughs> America <laughs> Online. <laughs> Dad, get off the phone. Keyword it's heat. That clip of um, what is it? Stewie <laughs> saying like, "Yeah, I know what sex is. It's when you put your penis in the uh, and he like he doesn't know how to say the words. <laughs> and his put the penis in the vagina." You know, one of the first instances of AOL, I didn't know what keywords to type in. So in the movies, um, Howard Stern's private parts had come out. And the only keyword there for that was, like, I think, Howard Stern or private parts. And my mom was like, we're not going there. I couldn't. I websites didn't work on our first computer. Like I could only do keywords. I don't know if it was just there weren't any websites back then. That's there the were there were websites, Not, but I don't know how you. It didn't work. I don't know. I couldn't explain it. Yeah, but I don't. Remember, I could only do keywords. I never remember originally searching, like doing searches. It was just I knew websites either from seeing them on TV or people directly telling me like. Yeah, it was a site right. called like Happy Puppy that did all video games and demos. And I remember as a kid being like, "Yeah, HappyPuppy dot com. I'll download my demo on fifty six k." Yeah, I don't know if there was like a search engine back then. I don't know if they had those. I mean, like when I, I'm thinking like, yeah, nineteen ninety three. Unless there was like AOL keyword search, because I mean it was pretty much AOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we, I remember when Netscape was like a provider or Juno. If everybody mm-hmm. remembers yeah, Juno. Yeah, remember that. Ah, good old days. But, yeah, that's where Jerry learned about dogs being in heat. <laughs> <laughs> that was AOL keyword. Heat. Um, AOL keyword, hot dogs. <laughs> if you want um, good jokes, go to boners.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a risky Google search. I mean, you pretty much know where you're going to get there. Funny jokes, obviously. <laughs> so Jerry discovers. Jerry goes down to see if Ruby's humping anything. Uh, and he finds the eggs have hatched. He finds a little a baby, miniature teacup T-Rex 
Pterodactyl, Stegosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and <laughs> I have in my notes, I forgot, and not Triceratops. <laughs> And uh, he gave them all names. <laughs> <laughs> you shall be Elvis. <laughs> um. So yeah, there's dinosaurs now, and it's still like really underwhelming reaction to there being di- live dinosaurs in your basement. Like he's like, oh, cool, but not like, holy shit. It's more like cool, like your dog had puppies. Cool, yeah, not like. I found a long dead species. <laughs> yeah, so he's excited, but I mean, I guess that's probably the direction. They're like, whoa, whoa, Jerry, take it down a notch. I know these are dinosaurs, but you got to be cool about this, Jerry. <laughs> I think he would have been more excited if you gave him a, an Elvis record. <laughs> They're like, hey, here's a Chasmosaurus. That's cool. <laughs> um,. Of course, T-Rex is the coolest, and he is named Elvis, the king. King, was it Tyrant King? King of the Lizards? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tyrannosaurus. Uh, Scene 17, Jerry loses the pterodactyl. My next note is, why the fuck is Jerry not in more shock and awe at fucking dinosaurs? (laughs) I like how the end of scene 16 is, Jerry finds dinosaurs. Beginning of scene 17, Jerry loses a dinosaur. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i guess he, he suspected or he hears it flying up the laundry chute to the second or third floor or wherever bursts out at monica and she's like what the hell she thought it was like what a bat or something yeah she's about to hit it with uh jerry's electric guitar which has just been restrung which is <laughs> stupid you know how unwieldy a guitar is of all things <laughs> to swing around a guitar is the last thing i would ever pick well, also jerry stops her he's it's not like, don't hit the dinosaur. It's, cool it, babe. I just restrung that guitar. <laughs> that fender. <laughs> yeah. Hey, mama. Hey, little mama. <laughs> His lip goes up. Um, I just sound like Butthead and not Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's Elvis, right? Monica is just brought into the fold of knowing about these dinosaurs because it just almost bit her but then she does get bit by elvis when he takes when uh jerry takes her down to see the rest of the dinosaurs elvis nips at her ass i don't like how um <clears throat> jerry had said um he's like careful you don't want him to bite you and i'm like i'm looking at that dinosaur like i think he wants to bite her <laughs> at least that's the expression i got from its <laughs> emotional deeply emotional face <laughs> the real talk the whole time i'm watching this i'm i'm just thinking jurassic park and muldoon muldoon's like you know they're lethal at eight months and i do mean lethal <laughs> just the ramifications of owning a baby tyrannosaur and just wondering at one point does it go from wanting to snuggle with you in bed to wanting to leave you looking like the horse and the godfather you know <laughs> I, and it's interesting because they don't look juvenile; they just look small. They look yeah, like fully dinosaurs. fully formed adults that are just tiny. What if, <laughs> what if they're not sacred? They were just like rejected dinosaurs <laughs> that the dinosaurs like put in this pit years and years and years ago that ended up getting frozen. They'll never be best in show. Cast them away. <laughs> um. So Vicky's into the fold. She gets bit by Elvis. And then... That's how you uh, get brought into the fold? She, so it's initiation. <laughs> Hold on to your Monica, hand. Bite Vicky. <laughs> Welcome, Dad. <laughs> Hold him down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Project Mayhem. You have to let him bite you. Bite him on the nipples. He's in heat. <laughs> Um, I love the 90s talk throughout the whole movie because I think just before um, it's like the the I think they were talking in the morning before Jerry went to go see the dinosaurs that hatched and she mentioned some of the names of the boys that she wanted to hang out with and see 
and just the insults they would throw at each other like oh you're such a specimen shut up barf boy <laughs> like the the back and forth with the like the 90s uh wording and stuff always i always love that <laughs> We've got some Matt inserted stop motion going on with Elvis in the next scene when he is being no. fed dog food, I think. It's pretty subtle. <laughs> Super I mean, subtle. It could be like I was gonna say, all jokes aside, for a nineteen ninety-three non like big budget Spielberg type movie, yeah, I think they did a fun job with stop animation and no, whatnot. It's not terrible. We really can't compare this to Jurassic Park when it is one of the best movies and special effects to the point where it was <laughs> yeah. genre defying. And it not holds a, up today. Not only in terms of just being a special effects for a dinosaur movie, and I'm just mean like special effects in general were right. redefined with that movie. Right. So to compare that with, I mean, that's that's really comparing two radically different subjects. I thought it looked pretty good considering what it was yeah there was like one or two shots that were really really bad to see but through the whole rest of it i mean the stop motion was pretty good and the puppetry yeah. was pretty nice and it almost gave me kind of like that nostalgic harryhausen feel of like the the old school stop animations yeah now dean you say something nice about them they know how to speak words <laughs> Well, pizza. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I mean, it's yeah. I'm not gonna pick apart the effects; they're fine for the budget, and it's like whatever. I don't look past it as like if everything else about the movie was a plus, I'd be like, that's fine. Like they're doing what they could. Yeah, I mean, this was meant to for little kids to watch, just <laughs> right. To keep direct their the parents. video. Yeah, you can't yeah. spend over a hundred thousand dollars in rentals. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so since elvis is a predator the king of the predators at that point <laughs> um <laughs> wait a minute whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> he is not a herbivore so he finds him some i think i guess think it's dog food or something jerky oh beef jerky that's it and then we find out what rico's doing uh, he's yelling at Vicky on the phone. <laughs> Those double-dealing sons of crooks! The tailors are good and honest. Those dirt farmers led me on a wild goose chase. You didn't find your cooler? Yeah, yeah, I got the cooler. I got it in my hip pocket. No, I do not have the cooler. Which, not knowing that they took them, is not theft, I guess, at that point. But once they found out that, oh, hey, that's where that guy's cooler went. That's now theft. I mean, the dad is like, we have to return these animals. Like, he is like, for it at first. For doing what objectively would be the right thing. Because he doesn't know that Numbnuts stole these eggs in the first place. <laughs> oh, that's his name. Numbnuts. Rico Numbnuts. Bubble butt. Burgle cut? <laughs> <laughs> and then we go back and we have the naming of the dinos. Monica just proclaims the pterodactyl as Madonna. Um, I'm pretty sure the Chasmo dinosaur says Madonna. Good old Frank Welker. <laughs> <laughs> so the dinosaurs can speak and or mimic sounds. That's the only time that happens throughout the whole movie. Say, Frank says Madonna. I'm your wife. <gasps> <laughs> no. Every moment is pain. Kill us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in hell, Frank. <laughs> we were These supposed to are twisted. <laughs> Why is your sister in heat? <laughs> I don't know why they sound like Mickey Mouse, but uh, the Stegosaurus becomes Jagger. Brachiosaurus is Paula. I assume Abdul. Mm -hmm. Straight up. And the Chasmo is Hammer. And of the MC variety. Um, and yeah, there's your five. What an eclectic group of, like, although, and then again, she named him Hammer, I think. So it's like, okay, so right. she likes, like, Paul Abdul, yes. Madonna, and MC Hammer. He's got the stones. Because <laughs> I forgot, because it was going to say, like, so Elvis, Jagger, and MC Hammer? 
<laughs> I was gonna say, if it wasn't for Elvis, like, yeah, you'd see these people at an after party together somewhere. Uh, after the Grammys, maybe? <laughs> the MTV <laughs> Video Awards? The Teen Choice Awards? <laughs> Uh, so they're in the basement. They have the access to the basement locked. Dad is trying to get in, and uh, Jerry goes to deal with it to uh, try to keep the dinosaur secret. He is a terrible liar. <laughs> yes, I do like that. Dad's like, all right, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like that was realistic to me. Like I know when you're putting it on, Jerry. I want you two to hightail it up to the living room because I know when you're up to something, and you're going to sit down and you're going to tell me what it is. Um, that's when we get back to the museum and. Working late, Mystic. Oh God, why do you, why do you scare the bejesus out of me? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Whitey, the janitor, all of a sudden comes out of nowhere. There's a real affinity for this place. <laughs> <laughs> just think of old Greg the whole time. It's just <laughs> you like old Greg's place. I've got all things that are good. You want to see my dinosaur poop? I know what you're thinking. Here comes old Greg. He's a scaly manfish. You don't know me. You don't know what I got. I got something to show you. You know what that is? That's old Greg's vagina. I got a mangina. I'm old Greg. Vicky very gingerly suggests, hey Whitey, maybe did you possibly take the cooler? And he gets very offended. Well, I do take it wrong, Miss Vicky. I clean and watch over this place like it was my own child. I've been working here for over 20 years, and I've never taken so much as a tissue. <laughs> just this shop. Like, he just cleans that 12 by 12 <laughs> area. Rico pops out of nowhere, gra- like, choke holds him. <laughs> it's funny, like, his, his life is literally kind of on the line because he can't breathe. But he's also, I would expect him to be, like, afraid of Rico, but he just... <laughs> Hits him full on in the in the gut with his broom <laughs> handle <laughs> to get him off of him. Almost like it's not the first time he's done this. Like, kindly fuck you, sir. Um, <laughs> this is the point where he's like, oh, because um, after he gets hit and then Whitey's like, yeah, I know, I know, I'm fired. I'll see you tomorrow. And then he walks away. <laughs> right. I think this was one of the few times, too, someone gets gut checked and they react appropriately. Rather than just like, ugh, and then they go back to doing what they're doing. Yeah, no, no, that shit takes the wind out of him. Yeah, I was going to say, he would have had the wind knocked out of him, for sure. Yeah. Well, maybe it's just that Steve actually hit him. is a is a good actor. No, he actually acting. just clocked him. <laughs> I need you to hit me as hard as you can. Ah! Rico then just decides to accuse Vicky that she's in on it somehow with the tailors, and he traps her in his office. Phantom Zone. Pretty much as a kidnapping at that point, because he locks her in there with him. We cut back and see Dad is grilling the kids about their acting fishy, and he doesn't buy it. Even he doesn't react appropriately to the fact that there's dinosaurs. He's more upset at first that <laughs> oh, more animals. Cooler. Yeah. Right. Five more mouths to feed. That's the exact number I said we couldn't. <laughs> Gonna have to get rid of the T-Rex. You kids never listen to me. <laughs> Monica, we're sorry. You have to go. At first, Dad thinks he's like, "Aha, I got it. Ruby's pregnant, and you're hiding it from me." And Jerry's <laughs> it like, "Wasn't Monica that was pregnant?" Yeah, and Jerry's like, "If Monica was in heat, you wouldn't keep her locked up down there." <laughs> oh my god! Uh, so he doesn't. He doesn't get to the bottom. Maybe of I will. <laughs> Maybe it's like a Fede Alvarez "Don't breathe" situation. Down I can there. handle my daughter. This is how you deal with a. <laughs> A teenager in heat. This becomes a very different movie. It becomes like a werewolf metaphor. <laughs> we have to keep our lock oh, down yeah. there during the nights. It's like that Pixar movie, Red. What's that, Red? This is called Red, Red, right? Yeah. 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 Except it's they're a werewolf instead. Um, yeah, I suppose. Those two films are exactly <laughs> alike. Dad sends him off to the rooms. Ruby just chills with the dinosaurs down in the basement, and they find a way to break out because the Brachiosaurus, Paula, undoes the latch. And uh, we don't know what they do yet because we're back in the museum, and Rico is still de- illegally detaining Vicky. <laughs> Which is now, I believe, a felony. Yeah, he's definitely... I mean, he's already in deep with stealing the stuff from the temple, but I don't know. That's international. That's a, somebody else's law. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, he started with maybe like a, a little theft and some light <laughs> assault in South America. Moved on to some... Uh, assault and battery. Um, yeah. She manages to find... You know, she picks one of the fossilized rocks or whatever and clobbers him over the head. Uh, it could could have left him for dead at that point. Like, that could... He could have been killed with a hit to the head like that with a rock. Um, I mean, she wouldn't... She would be justified because she's being kidnapped, kind of. <laughs> the scene ends as she's still going. <laughs> Blood She shows face. up at the Taylor farm, like, just spattered. <laughs> Thousand yard stare. She just is... Car nowhere in sight. She's just, like, walking in their front yard. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa what? Jerry's like, she's definitely in heat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just glad this movie was rated what it was because there were too many opportunities where it could have went in a much darker way, especially with sexual assault, that I'm uh, glad it didn't actually go that way. Yeah. Being an adult, in the back of my mind, that's all I was thinking. Like, please, please don't. Yeah, because he's just a slimy guy. Well, yeah. I mean, was was that where this was being implied? I thought it was just like the physical detainment of I think you're in on this and like I'll I'll kill you kind of deal. Well the guy is sleazy as hell and that's the only reason why my mind kept going that way and Yeah, I think Nick is just more afraid that oh I hope it doesn't continue down that to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean I I don't think any of like I don't think that's any of the the end result that we're hoping for in pre hysteria. (laughs) Well that's why I felt if it was any other movie with a worse like 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 Quentin Tarantino's pre hysteria. Oh, jeez. No, 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 no. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. And now I want to dance. I want to win. I want that trophy. She looks like Madonna in heat. Scene 26 is the kitchen disaster. Dad uh, hears, I guess he just hears the dinosaurs ransacking the kitchen and comes down. I don't believe this happened. Finds Elvis, pops through a potato chip bag. I thought this pops this was, out of Jerry's chest. This was the <laughs> lowest point in the movie for me. Be, uh, just it did remind me, like, like, whoa, this, these are nuisances, or what do you mean? Well, like, I wouldn't believe those five dinosaurs could have done all of. Oh that. yeah, and also it had a lot of gremlin vibes. I mean, I guess I forget what all how it destroyed it looked, but the pterodactyl could have flown around. I, I'm not going to justify it. You're right; they did kind of do a lot of damage. To it. <laughs> yeah. To some brand new to this world animals, probably that size couldn't have done. <laughs> that took. That's where Nick shot the movie off. That's where Rachel stood up. No, yeah, she checked out good. way before this. The only other irk thing that um, I felt through the whole movie is the way that Monica always refers to her father as daddy, and the tone of voice she always said with it. I would never believe a single word she would be saying, because she put on that like good girl kind of tone whenever she said that like oh i'm innocent i would just look at her every time like please <laughs> no get down to the basement and put the chain on that's not that <laughs> kind of a movie, full dude. moon tonight <laughs> full moon entertainment <laughs> brought to you by charles band and sun made i like how tim went one direction <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah right uh when Jer- so yeah dad finds the dinosaurs the kids come down Jerry with the understatement of the millennium. It's no big deal, Dad. <laughs> no, it surely's not. It's okay. We just have five dinosaurs that just ransacked our kitchen. <laughs> Dad's like cocking his rifle about to shoot them <laughs> off. It's no big deal. Fine, kill them. It's no big deal. Do it. I'll watch. I don't even care. T- Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's just a close up of all the dinosaurs' eyes just darting to each other. <laughs> One bead of sweat. Good, the bad, and the yeah. ugly style close up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Dad uh, essentially falls on Monica to clean up the kitchen, but tells Jerry to get rid of the dinosaurs. They got to go back to their time. Rico. That really nice time. Really nice man. Monica knowingly keeps Madonna, the pterodactyl, hidden. Knowingly. I just like to control it. (laughs) She uses hand signals like Chris Pratt. She just holds her hand up. (laughs) (laughs) Dinosaur instinctively knows what to do. Scene 27. Vic 
Vicky is a murderer. <laughs> Vicky on the lamb. <laughs> Vicky comes to the farm to tell Frank she has injured Rico. You love me, right, Frank? Um, sausage. <laughs> I just took out an insurance policy in Rico's name. <laughs> we can it get away It becomes like together. a very film noir on the back end of this. Oh. That's the ticket. Rule number one of kidnapping, you have to be attractive to keep a woman's yes. keys from her and not well, get the... bludgeoned over the head with a rock. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the number one rule when it comes to a rom-com is be attractive. Because if you weren't, it becomes a thriller horror movie instead. <laughs> right. I mean, rule yeah. Number two, like, don't be unattractive. Yeah, like yeah. in Say Anything, when John Cusack is standing outside her house with like the boombox, it's a much different film if that's Clint Howard outside in a thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Clint Howard from Last Action Hero. <laughs> Wait, no, that was uh, oh, wait, Tom who Newman. Plays... Oh, that's who plays that character? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You're right. You fool. <laughs> Join us next time when we lurk for a third host. Nick, open the door. Jump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for context, Frank is has taken her keys, and I guess since she's been part of an assault he's like doesn't want her to leave but he just does it in a really creepy way yeah that's why that's why he wants to <laughs> he holds her car it's, keys hostage it's because he now knows like she can't say no if he takes her keys because it's like the implication i'll also turn the implication because it'll turn her into the cops so he <laughs> takes her keys and he's like you should come inside and wait this out wait a murder out yeah you should lay low <laughs> <laughs> i know this farm it's getting pretty full, but you can still go. And the dinosaurs dance to rockabilly music. Well, while they're doing that, like, Jerry walks in while Vicky's sitting in the kitchen. And he's like, You look like you got a case of the GI Blues. What? <laughs> Is that another Elvis reference? It's gotta be. I mean, he's probably in a movie about war. And I think GI Blues might be a movie. I mean, I... I didn't know a ton of the the Elvis films. I appreciated Elvis, but not necessarily his film work. But I forget the context. But the dinosaurs are just they're just dancing to rockabilly music. <laughs> they're part of it. They're partying. Part of it. It's an obligatory dance scene. The Taylors introduce Vicky to Madonna, who just happens to fly in. I think she has a slightly more re- appropriate response. Like she's like the flabbergasted. Dinosaurs. Yeah. Which I love how the father's like, oh, we need to take it back. And then Vicky's immediately on the kid's side and she's like, Rico can get the shells. The dinosaurs are ours. <laughs> he can grab it over my cold, dead body. I'll kill him again if he's alive. Scene 28 Vicky meets the dinos. I don't know where her science comes from in this scene. She's like, maybe there's some kind of reverse hybridization. I'm like, what? what are you talking about? What? <laughs> They're just throwing out funny science words just to make themselves sound smart. I mean, she thinks poop is Azraelite. Get out of here. Is this some kind of uh, auto uh, erotica? Like, no, get the fuck out. Later that night, Frank and Vicky get fucking tanked. Um, they're just like drinking on the couch. Well, so... Jerry comes to tell Frank goodnight, and Frank immediately kicks him out of the room. And he's like, well, can I also say goodnight to Vicky? He's like, say goodnight to Vicky. And he's like, goodnight, Vicky. He's like, okay, everybody said goodnight. You can leave now. <laughs> Which also, next in my notes, I screw the names up, and I say, and then Jerry and Vicky just get down to business. And then I say, oh, no, Frank and Vicky get down to business. Well, at least it wasn't Frank, uh, anyone in Monica. <clears throat> Did Jerry have a crush on Vicky? I don't think so. I could I couldn't tell because sometimes he looked li- at her like a in a Oh might, my god, I'm now understanding girls look he but looked then, at her like Dean does now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might just be that he's in the market for a new mom or it could be the fact that she's an adult who agrees with him of keeping the dinosaurs. Do you think that's a a viable app idea like kids looking for new moms? <laughs> Like oh Tinder, God. but like <laughs> <laughs> forgive him, Father, for he doesn't know. 
like on behalf of their does. everyone delete this episode on behalf of their yeah. single so, father so you was... want you so <laughs> dean just just i'm gonna say this one thing and we'll move on so you want an app to find a new mommy i think you might get the wrong clientele <laughs> Okay, I I was gonna watch past this, but now I'm curious. So, Dean, in your in your kind of like sales pitch for this new product, before uh, it's a before Nick idea. and I sign on, it's for a it, new yeah, before idea. We, before we invest, um, <laughs> so are these going to be kids who no longer have moms, who once had moms, who never had moms, or ones that have moms but they're not a big fan? Well, the kids definitely had a mom if they're alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking. He's not wrong. Like you're swiping, <laughs> mommy. Sorry, mommy. Sorry, mommy. Sorry. <laughs> and the the women are on there. It's like it's essentially. I don't know. I guess there could be an adoption angle, or also just like I'm looking for a mom for my my dad to marry. You know. It's almost yeah. like tin. Like if you gave your phone your t- your phone to your kid and said, "Swipe, go ahead, kids, swipe away." So yeah, I mean, essentially, <laughs> the kid is just acting as a middleman, right? To save time for I, like the father, I could see how it could be nefarious, <laughs> but that's not my intentions. I <laughs> think you would have a long-term, really great app set up, but those <laughs> first two months for you, man, are going to be real brutal. <laughs> and for that reason, we'll have to pass. <laughs> I never expected to have this conversation in pre-hysteria. <laughs> you know, at first I'm like, man, I'm, you know, I'm cursing a little bit more, but I think we should really hammer in the fact that this is not a kid's episode for or, such a child. Or it could movie. be if you want to invest in Dean's new app. <laughs> yeah. Mommy Finder. <laughs> You've matched with little Jerry. It'll be like Bumble. The kid Mom's asks the message first. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so Good God. <laughs> um, it's a yeah. sick world we're living in. So, I mean, that's... I guess, sorry, that stemmed from Nick wondering if he had a crush. I, I didn't get that sense. I just assumed he... I, well, I didn't get the sense Monica of anything. I don't know if he's looking for a new mom. I just think... I, I didn't get any kind of feeling towards Vicky necessarily one way or the other. He's just like, yeah, dad's horny. Like, let him get some and... <laughs> She's our new mom, whatever. Yeah, Monica, however, is completely against the idea. Yeah. And there's only one woman in her life, and that is their late mother, and that's it. So the fact that Vicky is still there, um, her hovering <laughs> around the, the corner, you can tell there's a lot of animosity towards her for that reason. They do get down to business a little bit. Frank doesn't well, want to... S- yeah, I was going to say, they get down to business, and there's implied, like, then they cuts and then they wake up the next morning and he's like on the couch and she's outside so i don't know (laughs) and those amazing boxers he loves to show off i can see your grapes frank (laughs) that's not something you want to yell out across the field (laughs) just children present (laughs) this is a kids movie um vicky yeah in the morning vicky's just repairing the greenhouse i don't know if I don't know if that was ever stated ever. And that was like the night after she got there. She just decides to start housework, like house repair. Um, <laughs> well, I thought she was fixing up the greenhouse to create an environment that the dinosaurs Oh, you're in, right. Because they need to maintain 99 degrees. You're right. So overnight, she just built an entire greenhouse from scratch. I think- <laughs> oh, I'm not saying it's right. <laughs> And that, you know, and it makes me think, all right, so clearly he has like a a grape yard farm thing for raisins. That's what the sign says out front. (laughs) All of that. that. (laughs) All of that. (laughs) But what gets me is like in the beginning of the movie, I thought he like moonlighted as an archaeologist and he had like this whole big setup downstairs. Like, Where's he getting these fossils from? You mean to tell me he's just digging in the backyard and finding loads of... (laughs) You know, fossilized shit and just like, hey, I know a guy. Just like on his lunch break. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It seems like there's an interest, like a shared father-son thing. Like, we're into fossils and dinosaurs. But I guess that's not the case if he's not absolutely floored and flabbergasted by living, breathing dinosaurs in his house. So, 
I think he just looks at his. Oh, yeah. So that means, like, he cares enough that it's like, oh, the fossil's are beginning and call the kids down. We're going to work on it together and take it to this place that clearly he's been going to. And then live dinosaurs and it's, well, we can't hold on to these. <laughs> Kill them first. I want them fossilized. Goddamn varmints. Maybe it's not a dinosaur thing. Maybe he just really loves fossils. Shit, to be exact. Because he only ever seems to sell shit. <laughs> what's that scene from Jurassic 3? I can't tell the difference between what's rock and what's bone. And in this case, it's like, well, son, you got to find the difference between the rock and the poop. <laughs> what's the other part from Jurassic Park 3? Alan. It cements it as the third best movie in out of the six for me. <laughs> so Vicky's, yes, she's making an, uh, an environment, an ecosystem, a habitat, if you will, that these dinosaurs can survive. And even though they've survived thus far, Vicky knows she needs that these dinosaurs need a certain <laughs> temperate zone, even though they came from all different eras, as Nick has pointed out. You know, climate would be the least of their concerns. It would actually be the oxygen saturation in the air because it would have been vastly and different. And the, all the fucking germs that are around that didn't exist back then, they would have died. And kind of like War of the Worlds. They would have been decaying, <laughs> dying already <laughs> from bacteria <laughs> eating them. Jerry! <laughs> and his just face is just <laughs> like raiders. Jerry, is this what heat is? <laughs> Um, Am I in heat, Jerry? (laughs) (laughs) Feels like my blood is on fire. Um, She's repairing the greenhouse. And yeah, there's this little conversation about... Frank comes to the window in in his underwears that his kids bought him covered in raisins. Because, Dad, you're a raisin farmer, and we just figured you were into that kind of thing. (laughs) It's a career, but we want to make it a lifestyle. (laughs) I'm glad you're still wearing them. (laughs) Thanks for showing us, Dad. Yeah, they have, like, a flirty, weird thing about his boxers. And then Monica comes out and throws shade. She's like, when is this bitch leaving? Is she done? (laughs) Please. Almost verbatim. (laughs) We don't really... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we don't really know what her deal is. I mean, if you re- remember from the beginning of the movie that Frank's wife is dead, you can probably infer that she just like doesn't want a new mom. It's not explicitly stated yet, so she's just throwing shade. And I mean, I feel like at this point it's not subtle that she doesn't want a new mom, even before she says she doesn't want a new mom. <laughs> I didn't know. if This was very nuanced, okay? <laughs> It's the subtext is just. I don't know how Paula the Brachiosaur got all the way out into the fields to st- frighten one of the <laughs> one of the rays, the great pickers, I guess, one of the field hands. Yeah, much less, much less hammer getting all the way out to the road. <laughs> Doesn't really amount to anything. They just like well, still. Ro- I mean, I mean, it's interesting to just like roam the farm, but there's no consequence. I mean, maybe it, it like maybe it should go to Rico. Where they can get them into a permanent habitat, because clearly within a day they've lost all of them <laughs> multiple times. Danny is probably the most interesting character in this film. Danny, Monica's boyfriend, shows up. <laughs> Danny, um, I now can't... brain dead. Danny <laughs> is the best character in this entire movie. Yeah. At first, I'm like, this guy is stupid as hell. And then just the pure 90s of him. Yeah. I love that sophisticated surfer speak. I was going to say. I love that. This was like, I wasn't really wondering where this movie took place. But when he showed up, I'm like, oh, they're in California. Yeah, it's very like (laughs) Surfers 3. You were so fresh. I had to see my lady love. (laughs) Very Pauly Shore. (laughs) Yeah. Also, he looked like he was 40, and then he yeah. mentions, like, <laughs> She's you just date me because I'm 16 and I have a car. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I think he was, like, he says, like, he's, like, held back a year. Like, he's a year, kind of older, but he's still in high school kind of deal. Yeah. But he's still, like, way old. Yeah, that's him now, by the way. <laughs> it is not. 
<laughs> it is. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. I looked him up earlier. Tim yeah. just shared a Danny the actor's current. He just looks like a grandpa, or could be. A it grandpa. looks like the LinkedIn profile to a lawyer or something. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like he now does the the litigation cases for Full Moon Pictures. <laughs> is he really? No, 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 no. He just like, <laughs> he has that that distinguished air. See, Nick believes it. Um, <laughs> Citation needed. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the subtitle to this episode at this point. <laughs> yeah, but Danny, yeah, my notes like he's like 36 with braces. Talks like he's from Ventura, California. He thinks Hammer is a toy. He's like, awesome gizmo. Where's the batteries? It's kind of a backhanded <laughs> statement for the, the special effects in the movie. <laughs> Where are the batteries? And he starts tearing into its back. And this <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Jerry, kill me. <laughs> Danny, Still haven't monster. found them yet. <laughs> Both hands now, he's just going in. They put blood in these things now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, the way he laughs, and, like, as he's leaving, he, t- he like, stops and turns and looks at Monica again, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's points where he doesn't even talk, all of a sudden he's just like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Monica's like, get out of here, Danny. My dad hates you. And he does come out and he's like, get the. And also, from the sounds here, of Danny. it, Monica also hates him because later they're talking and they're like, yeah. um, like well, it's kind of like, how would you feel car. if like, you didn't have Danny anymore and you would, you would want to find somebody new? And she's like, I want somebody new now. Yeah. And that, that, that's actually a good moment between the two of them. Yeah, and then they laugh um, at their mutual hate of Danny. It's like, what if you, you chose if, to involve him in this? How would you feel if Danny didn't exist anymore? <laughs> what, what are you saying? Cox are we, we going to do it right now? Okay, <laughs> let's kill him. What, 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 Monica? Whoa, not cool. <laughs> Danny has a funny line, though. He's like, Frank comes out in his underwear because he doesn't give a shit. Danny's like, Hey, your dad's half naked. Nice gams, Mr. T. I see where your daughter gets her legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Danny beats it. And that's when Rico shows up to hold Frank at gunpoint. I hate the trigger he's just playing in this. Yeah, is his finger on the trigger? Yeah, it's just the whole time is <laughs> just like they're so much room for bad things like, in real like life. there's almost a marvin situation like <laughs> yeah <laughs> at any moment any moment well i like most of rico's lines throughout this scene that they made me laugh yeah you broke the law you like threatening women a little bit hey wait a minute she was asking for it and then like he grabs the gun out of his hands and he's like crawl, crawl back, back to your, to your car. car are you out of your stick of mind watch me crawl Really humiliating. They're my babies, not yours. I'll be back. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did find that guy entertaining for what you know he had to work with. I guess I would say I'm surprised he didn't really turn up in a whole lot of stuff. But... Yeah, I mean he's been in like a ton of stuff between like series and movies, but I it's like never it's never lead. It's always like somebody else within it as i'd be interested to see him in something else just to see how um, he does he's in it. the negotiator with samuel L. jackson and i think right kevin i remember seeing that on his list yeah yeah kevin spacey it's a good movie worth watching once so frank sends rico off firing guns in the air um vicky and monica show up like we're at a gun is everything okay so nonchalant i don't know why he didn't just say like I was chasing away Rico. Vicky literally already yeah. thought she killed him. It would probably yeah. do her heart well to know, like, well, Vicky, you're not a murderer. Or he would be terrif- terrifying her because you didn't kill him. Oh, no. He's still alive and he's wandering around. You weren't supposed to do that. Later that night, Vicky is cooking for the Taylors. And Monica hates Vicky. We assume now because she's not mom. That's where I wrote it down. I'm like, oh, yeah. I guess that's why. Dad has a chat with her on the porch and pries it out of her. <laughs> and, and this always this it felt weird when he's like, "Are you jealous?" Like I don't know, it was a weird <laughs> way to put that 
feeling. I mean, he has, she has been calling him daddy this whole time, and I don't think it clicked in his head <laughs> oh, until no. now. Oh, no. Monica, I saw that new app on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's only. <laughs> Oh, man, man, right out of the um, gate, got it, competition. It, <laughs> yeah, it just it's it's he could have written it differently and still gotten the same point across. Like it just came out strange. It also says he follows it up with Monica. You'll always be daddy's girl. You know that. Which is again, it's an okay line to say. I feel not, like it's an okay line to say strange. if she were. Younger, yeah, because yeah. it's like when she's like, I don't know, seventeen. Actually, no, <laughs> no, no, no. She's like, like fifteen because she was dating Danny because he had a car and she didn't. I think this is one of the lines meant for the kids and not for the adults because for him to ask, "Are you jealous?" is pretty stone deaf, or tone deaf rather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And for uh, it's pretty obvious on why she's being such a bitch to right her so i mean it it makes sense to the adults and i think it's meant more for kids because don't forget this was around the time of um parents getting divorced in every single type of media you can consume at that time so they had to really bury into a child's head that it's okay for mommy and daddy to move on when the other one leaves or dies or dies rico hires some dummy scummy dudes (laughs) scene 34 they're amusing. <laughs> They're amusing. I do like... So Rico's like driving towards the farm with these... He's just come up with these two hitmen, I guess, or just henchmen. I think, yeah, just like um, goons. He paid him a thousand bucks each. I love that. He's like, under his breath, he's like, a thousand bucks a piece for these two. Kind of just says it to himself. Well, I like how he ends up slipping and he's like, we got to get these. They're worth million. And he stops and they're like, well, Mr. Sarno, if they're worth millions, <laughs> then, uh, then, uh... Me and Richie should get, like, um, 1200 a piece. Am I right, Richie? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my note's like, oh, 400 extra dollars. <laughs> when they hear there's more money Does it, Doesn't he even argue with them about that? I would have just been, all right, deal, and then... Well, make- yeah, because at one point then he's helping them and they're like, well, if we're doing this. We should at least get like this. And he's like, I'll give you 1500 Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> one of them sounds like Andrew Dice Clay. Some lizard bites me. I'll grind him up into a pair of shoes. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh! Danny comes back to pick up Monica. I don't know what the scene is all about, but. Uh, <laughs> that could be applied back. to a lot of places. <laughs> He starts to question her. He's like, I must be the only person in 10th grade with a license. Is that why you go out with me? No. It's because you're 16 and real smart. (laughs) (laughs) She said with him not looking a day over 16. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so he picks up Monica, they're driving, and they pass Rico and his henchmen heading towards the house. Monica just is able to spot that it's Rico in the driver's seat of that van. So he has Danny, she has Danny turn around, they head back towards the house. We get this big sequence at the house with um, Rico and the henchmen. Uh, I forgot their name, Louis. Louis and Richie. And, yeah, Louis yeah, and Richie. Minnie? Louis and Richie. Yeah, because Louis is the big, like, <clears throat> Arnold looking one, and then Richie is the, the other uh, mafioso. The, oh! Yeah. That's the Can't one. Can't this happened. Lewis bamboozles Frank that he's selling Girl Scout cookies. Completely fools him. Can I help you? Could I perhaps interest you in some Girl Scout cookies? <laughs> is this a joke? Scouting is not a joke, sir. It keeps the little tarts off the street. It fools, fools me every time. <laughs> They're my biggest fears. I don't have any cash. I, I... <laughs> Sorry, a lot of deep cut jokes. But yeah. Yeah, he pulls out a revolver, which is just an interesting. I mean, it's like 1993. I think there was other choices for guns. No, that's one of the best choices for guns. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because you don't have to worry. It doesn't leave a casing behind for cops to track. That's why most mob hits always use a revolver. 
Yeah. Uh, also, it, I guess it's less prone to jamming, or it doesn't jam, or whatever the case is. Yeah. Oh. Citation yeah, needed. Don't, don't, don't. That's not <laughs> a proper source of criminal advice. Everything I know is from movies. <laughs> What's that thing with, like, I am not a proper financial um, <laughs> yeah. advisement advice? Like, not yeah, a doctor. Don't, I, I am not. I am not a lawyer, but. Yeah. Here's what you should do. Uh, there's this whole sequence back and forth with the other henchmen and Rico outside trying to subdue Ruby, who's barking up a storm. I guess they know the dinosaurs are in the greenhouse. They're trying to get in there. Uh, Vicky shows up and helps Jerry to stop them from caging these dinos. Jerry's involved. It's child. Frank headbutts Lewis, who is conscious still for a split second after the headbutt. Yeah, I like how, like, Jerry just goes into attack mode and is like, ah, and <laughs> jumps at a guy. And then the distraction is enough for Frank to just be like, ah, and just headbutts him down. Which, because of the latency, he doesn't go down for, like, a second. But he still does. Right. Hey, why did you... Ugh, just, like, collapses. Find out later that Louis's dead. <laughs> Busted his, his nose, nose right up into his, his brain. Nose. <laughs> exactly. The one fear of every child of the 90s. <clears throat> We're told that before we hit the ground. any hit to our nose would launch our bones into our brains. Yeah. I think I have a... Um, that happened to you once? Ender's Game to thank for that, because that was a death in that. That's how they killed Bonesaw. Him. Yeah, Bonesaw in the, in the shower. Bon- Naked bonesaw? shower fight. I thought it was Bonesaw Madrid. <laughs> It's Bonzo, Bonzo. yeah. Bonzo. You know, that one scene when Ender ends up in the bathroom and he says, Okay, little man, you have to last three minutes with me. Uh, Bonzo, Bonzo. Three minutes with me. I got you for three minutes. I'm surprised they didn't do that scene in the movie with Asa Butterfield. Macho, how did you get into this program? <laughs> You're like 58 years old. Mark is like 65 at this point. <laughs> um. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking uh, about? <laughs> yeah, Lewis is dead because Frank headbutted him. Oh, No, yes, Lewis that, shows up. Go. Lewis shows up to this, you know, everybody's struggling to, for the dinosaurs, control the dinosaurs in the greenhouse. Lewis shows up, shoots a hole. I don't know if he somebody bumps into him. He shoots a hole into the greenhouse roof, and Madonna escapes the uh, pterodactyl through the hole. Um, but Frank makes off with Ruby and the rest of the dinos. Uh, I guess because they all listen to Ruby. <laughs> So the, I I don't know what their logic was like. He's their mom, or maybe they they force her to take Ruby because she's their mom. I don't know. Yeah, because they take Vicky and Ruby hostage, right? Or I think it's also they know that they won't do anything <laughs> because they value. They don't know which they value more, so they took Vicky and <laughs> Ruby, both of their mother figures. Take them. <laughs> I got really alert once they took the dog. Like, don't bring her into this. Yes, yeah, so she stole the. The cooler, she hatched the eggs. She was the mastermind behind this entire movie. But don't bring her into this. Well, I like how Rico, when Louie comes in and ends up like, has the gun, shoots the hole. Rico's like, oh, thank you. And takes it out of his hands. And then they're talking to him and he's like, stop, stop, stop. I got to think. And as he's doing it, he's like scratching his head. By rubbing the gun barrel against it. <laughs> terrible. Like he's terrible holding the gun discipline. against his own skull. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was funny. The trigger discipline in this movie is a That was on purpose. Oh, I mean, it's it got a laugh out of me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like that. It wasn't accidental. Oh, no. <laughs> I like that they. Uh, Rico threatens them. He's like, count the 500 while we leave. And they, like, literally count the 500. <laughs> like, 425. 126. <laughs> now we can go after them. Doesn't Monica call him out on it? Like you don't actually have to count out the 500. I think they're gone. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, maybe I don't recall. Insert clip. Citation needed. <laughs> um, 426. 
Five hundred. You count like an old lady. Oh, Nick was right. Or, oh, Nick, you were wrong. Oh, I'll use one of those takes. Hey, <laughs> it's like a oh. choose your own adventure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Rico and the gang are driving to somewhere. We don't really know where at this point. They're dying of sweat. They're sweating bullets. Yeah. Seems so like we're we're dying back here. Please turn the AC on. And she's like, they have to live in ninety nine degree temperatures. Sometimes, depending on the plot. Period. <laughs> depending on the scene. And what ha- What is the most the strangest writing decision of the whole movie? We cut back, and it's. <laughs> Right. Taylor's at breakfast. <laughs> I thought it was going to be just, like, oh, they're going to like, they have to call the cops and go like chase after them. And he's just like, I made breakfast. Eat it. <laughs> Dad. He literally is like, Vicky's got it under control. <laughs> like there was guns involved. She like, killed Rico little... once. She can do it again. <laughs> Rico must have harbored the power of these <laughs> South American dinosaurs to... Come back to life. And it cuts to care of Rico him. and just like black smoke is trailing into his body and he rises in the antique shop. Kalima! <laughs> <laughs> your heart, Frank, your heart! <laughs> yeah, Frank just like wants to pretend that nothing happened and is like, well, that's out of our lives now. We don't have a dog anymore. That's sad, I guess. I no longer have a love interest. Gotta download that app again. <laughs> A old keyword, mommies only. Um, uh, so Daddy, there's Frank... a sign here that says there's hot moms in our area. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, look into this for me. <laughs> oh, man. You're 12. You can. I trust what you think is hot at this point. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis. Uh, so I guess we realize this is actually a couple days later because they look down and Frank sees the newspaper story that Rico is having a new exhibit and Vicky's there in the photo. So they just, at that point, they just gave up and it's <laughs> a few days later. Yeah, and it's like, oh, like, museum couple reveals whatever. So he literally just took it as, well, Guess I lost that one. I guess I'll just <laughs> not notify the police that he's holding this girl captive, pretending yeah. to be a couple. That's like a appropriately a plot. I don't know if it's a plot hole. It's just like a why did you do this? They just wrote it the way they wanted it. I think it's no probably reason. because they knew if they just call the police, this movie would be over instantly. Well, what are or they going to say? They would know about the dinosaurs. Yeah, it's like oh, your your girlfriend and dog were kidnapped. Oh, and why were they kidnapped? Oh, you have dinosaurs. Okay. Well, well I don't know a thing the, where you don't say that part. I don't know if the police ask when somebody's been kidnapped. Well, why were they kidnapped? Why? <laughs> Do you have reason to believe? That's not why? a good enough reason. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you, maybe they it's deserved it. Reason, why would Christ. they be kidnapped? <laughs> we're trying something new with the police department. <laughs> We're kind of stretched thin and really deciding which case we re- want to take. The chief said we really have to be more discerning in what we take on every day. <laughs> um, so this cuts back. Uh, I guess they're convinced to actually do something. The kids are like, we got to get our dog back at least. Come on. So we see the press conference is kind of shaping up that uh, where Rico is going to unveil the dinosaurs. I <laughs> sure. I just there's like an uh, there's a non sequitur line from a reporter here. Miss Vicky, is it true that you were married to Tiny Tim? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Why. It's just like a random line. Well, also I want every press conference to take place like this, where they have to use a a hot cold scale. Can you give us a hint? Is it from the century? Cold, very cold, Bob. Uh, bigger than a bread basket? Maybe. Is it fish or fowl? Ooh, you get warm there, Helen. Is it a whole flock of bald eagles? Be cold again. Can you imagine if they got into like the White House press coverage and it's like, will we go to war? Colder. It would certainly be more exciting, interesting press conferences. Universal health care? Colder. <laughs> Very cold. Very cold. 
Loan forgiveness for college students. Freezing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So Vicky might have been married to Tiny Tim. Um, Dad and the kids arrive at the the Whitey's Museum. (laughs) Whitey's Pawn Shop. (laughs) Whitey's Pawn Shop. Um, Whitey lets them in and they, we assume, make some, devise some kind of plan to uh, get the dinosaurs back. So it confused me for a bit because I thought when he was sneaking them in, he was sneaking them into the, like, the, the museum. And then when I find out it's the antique shop across the street from the museum and it's like, oh, they sneak in the back way. And then Frank's like, where is he? Across the street. And then Frank just walks outside and across the street. It's like, oh, so... <laughs> I mean, it makes sense later when you find out, like, they already, like, it's it's very Ocean's, like, 11. They already did the heist, and we're seeing, like, the right. aftermath. Yeah, Frank just, like, walks through the crowd and stares down Rico. And fires one shot. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank each, each and every one of you for coming out here today. What you're about to see is a labor of love. And I'd also no, like to... <laughs> He's got a gun. <laughs> uh, it seems like Whitey and Vicky are like looking at each other, like, "Well, did you do the thing?" Or I did the thing, and we assume that when they pull the cover off of this cage, it's not going to be the dinosaurs. It's Richie and Louie's bodies. <laughs> it's Tiny Tim. <laughs> Vicky takes off into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Stabs the reporter who asked her that question. <laughs> um, Those records yeah, they were sealed. <laughs> the blanket gets pulled off and it's Ruby. Ruby instead of the dinosaurs. The press just laughed. Immediately laughs and they just immediately like they're out. They're like, okay, this was all bullshit. <laughs> um, Rico is expectedly upset. And we see Whitey leading the rest of the gang across the street. Uh, to the back room and where the dinosaurs are. I don't know when he, like, did he decide to do that earlier? Or do they wheel the dinosaurs out? Yeah, because it's like, so that means Rico did not see what was under that from the time he got there into the time he unveiled it. So did he just trust somebody else to be like, here, take my dinosaurs, put them in this cage for me? You think he would have learned at this point, like, he cannot leave these dinosaurs. (laughs) Yeah. Just like hanging. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. There's no comeuppance for Rico, really. It's just, oh, the dinosaurs are safe, and Rico looks like an idiot. Well, I love how, like, that's, I thought there was going to be more, and then literally, like, no, that's just kind of the the movie of, oh, they took the dinosaurs, snuck them away into their car, and then Vicky walks across the street with Frank, just gets in the car, and then they just take off, and Rico's just like. Not before punching Rico, right? Oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Public humiliation, worse than jail time. <laughs> Surprise, Rico's into it. <laughs> yeah, he watches them make out like, all right. Because he punches, Frank punches Rico, and then he just starts kissing Vicky. It's like ultimate hero moment, like, okay. Then he find out this was Rico's plan all along to find a new family <laughs> for the kids. On the side, they're like, thanks, Rico. And he's like, anything for you, kids. He calls up Hefe. He's like, mission was a success. <laughs> <laughs> but why do we have to act out there when nobody was around? <laughs> I had to believe it. I wouldn't be able to sell it to Jerry and Frank. I had, to, I had to be the role, Hefe. <laughs> Rico, I lost half my motor function when you <laughs> clobber me with that dinosaur egg. I hit my head on the side of a rock when I fell down. <laughs> I had to sell it. I had to sell it, man. <laughs> no one would have believed me. Lose this number, Hefe. I don't think Frank deserves this ending because he didn't want to do anything. The kids like forced him to like go down and like save the day, but he gets to punch Rico and kiss Vicky. He's if like, anything, you, Vicky you should have do got anything. to punch him. I think it yeah. was personal at this point because he's like nobody messes with my woman, and he had to establish his dominance. Maybe it was he who was in heat the whole time. <laughs> He punches Rico, pees on the dinosaurs, mine. (laughs) 
Yeah, you're right, Nick. Did anybody right. else, um, were they a little surprised by that weird closing credits of they get in the car, they're all happy, they drive away, <laughs> yeah. and you see Hefe just on the side of the road, <laughs> hand on his knife, and then it just freeze frames. <laughs> yeah. The, two, the hand uh, on his knife yeah. was ominous as hell. It was it's, a, like a, it's a payoff that never happens. It's like the trombones is playing. It's like, bah, 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 and he's just like staring. Like, you, you two know, just he paid them a visit at the end of like after those credits were done and got those dinosaurs back. It's very like end of Gremlins when he's like, I have to take the Mogwai back until you learn to deal with them. Right. It, I feel it was more along the lines of like the um, like the protectors in the mummy with Brendan Fraser. Oh yeah, like Oded Fairs guys. Yeah, mm. they weren't gonna, they weren't there to take the dinosaurs back. They were gonna be repaid in blood from the looks of it. Well, I mean, supposedly protecting those eggs were supposed to bring what, like health and fortune to their people. You have cursed the their ver- families. The very day that they took those eggs, he got hit in the head. So coincidence? I think not. Um. Yeah, and that's that's prehistoria. That's prehistoria. I mean. I'm not running out to watch it again, but I didn't dislike it. I think everybody who grew up on it that loves it is justified in having it be one I of think their loves. It'll, who are those people? I think it would find them. It would just get buried because modern society would not look at this movie as a PG thirteen <laughs> fun romp with dinosaurs. What's this movie rated? PG. PG. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think this is like a PG-13 kind of deal. I mean, I think it's some like interesting dialogue choices for some of these scenes, but I don't think that would necessarily push it over at any point. It's funny to think because it's like, oh yeah, it's like what made movies PG rather than P rather than just G? I feel like I never see G these days. Like even Disney movies and it's like, oh, it's a Disney Pixar. It's PG. Like I feel like I really? never see G anymore. For real? No, I mean, there's I probably up, a bunch. Up in cars were G. Were they? How is that not like how is the beginning of up not considered like it, okay, up is PG. Okay, yeah, turning I was say, red like is scenes PG. of traumatic whatever for Cars kids. Cars was G. Turning turning red is PG. That makes sense cuz it deals with cultural stuff. I feel G you can turn your brain off and there's nothing that's going to impact you or make you think on any kind of intellectual level. PG makes you think just enough, but it hides all the dark adult stuff. And I don't mean like sex and stuff, but just general adult themes like divorce and soul. Yeah. Soul was rated PG. It deals with death. Yeah. Frozen. What was the feelings one? uh, Pixar one. Inside, Inside out. out. Inside Out was rated PG. Yeah, okay. All yeah, right. I feel like a majority was... of them are all PG. I didn't realize that. So the Pixar's like feeling growing up, coming of age kind of stuff is Frozen was Frozen 2 was G. Moana, Tangled, Encanto, Zootopia. Brave. But those were all G? I think so. I typed in G US. No, Big Hero really? 6 is PG. I'm surprised. How is Zooptopia G? There's, there's many. Is there a lot of innuendo in that? I don't remember. Well, I feel like the entire movie was like a a take on film noir, with the, um, like the killer going around turning the animals wild and all of this stuff, and you find out it's part of this conspiracy. Right. This episode's really going out on a whimper. You're going out on a whimper. <laughs> I always do. Uh, it's really interesting. G the, the viewers want to know what's the most recent rated G movie, and now I'm getting frustrated because they can look it up on Google themselves. Fine, you know what? Yeah, you guys go look, and then you just write in the comments like recent G movies. Because <laughs> every time I do a Google search, it can like Minions. No, it's not. Turning Red. No, it's not. It's a kids movie. I asked for a G rated movie. Speaking of writing into us, if you're listening to this do it still just (laughs) we want to hear from you i know you're probably like i'm not going to spend the time but no i'm serious write to us right now on any of our platforms tell us what you think even if it's bad we want to know 
you got to know that you're out there. Yeah. This is a call for help. <laughs> Let us know if we need to get rid of Dean. Yeah. We'll go on another vacation. <laughs> Indefinitely. <laughs> they know how to do it now with a revolver, apparently, which doesn't leave gun casings behind. They can get rid of me quick. Ratatouille. I'm going to leave off on Ratatouille. <laughs> oh, that's G. Yeah, a movie yeah. 12 years ago. Wally Cars. The G movie is dead. You heard it here on Screen Refresh. Toy Story 4. Everybody's grown up. Kids can handle grown up stuff now. If it was laughable at times, there were there were some moments where I kind of had a second guess the movie, but it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. But it was still this nostalgia lenses helped it quite a bit. I I guess I'm just naive to what direct to video quality is, and I thought, oh, I, I mean, just I like could have gone to the movie theater, but uh. It might not have made a lot of money, especially after Jurassic Park. But <laughs> I think it came out just before. I was like, right? oh, I, w- I, w- I wouldn't look at this and be like, oh, this is a direct-to-video quality. Mm. But I don't know. I guess that's a compliment <laughs> for it. The end. The end. Thank all you listeners out there in listener land, podcast world, for coming along for the adventure on Prehysteria. Are you prehysterical now? As always, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Screen Refresh, or email us your own movie memories at ScreenRefresh at gmail.com. If you like the show, help us out and leave a rating and review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts to help others find us. For Nick and Tim, this is Dean saying we'll see you again in a couple weeks. No, we won't. No, we won't. We're on vacation. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> We're on vacation. We shouldn't even be working right now. This is highly illegal. We just can't not do stuff for you guys. We'll be back. If you're listening to this, we'll be back soon. Before you know it. And you'll like it. Unless you listen to this after September, in which case. We're so sorry. You can listen to us right now. We've got more episodes. So, on to the next. The end. We did it. (laughs) 